Make one phone call, guys. I'll be right with you. Okay. Well, let's call the meeting to order um, for our uh, June 1st, 2022 meeting. Um, Robert, Dennis, which one do you guys want to call the roll? I'll do the roll. I think Dennis is on. roll. All right. Yeah, I got it. I got it, I'm Rob. Okay. Thank you. Roxanne Pecora. She's going to be late. Going to be late. Okay, so that's Ben Gadali. Mitchell Cohen. Present. Thank you, Mitchell. Scott McCarthy. Harry Hansen. Here. Cindy Lanzetta. Here. Amanda Gatto. Here. Drew Bodges. I'm here. Thomas Wilkin. Here. Michael Bowden. I know here. you're here, Michael. I saw you. Yeah, you're muted. Joe Brown. Sorry, here. Joe Brown. I know he resigned, but um, I thought he was going to stay, so we'll keep him that way. Oh, he Mr. did Ferraro. resign. Is that Joe Ferraro you called? Yes, I did. Thank you. Not did I mispronounce it? No, no. Thank you, Mr. Ferraro. Just didn't hear you. I'm here. Miss, Miss Welton. Here. Mark Watkins. Mr. Omquist. I see him. Yeah, he's here. I know he's here. Mr. Markowitz. Mr. Rudikoff. Here. Here. Thank you. Is that, is that Mr. Mr. Markowitz? Markowitz? Yep, that is, Victor. I thought that was you. Thank you. Mr. Rudikoff, I saw you, so thank you. Mr. Travers. Mr. Murray. Here. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Mr. Mc Mr. McLaughlin. Present with candy. <laughs> That's good, Victor. <laughs> Thanks, good, Vincent. We have a quorum. All right, thanks, Dennis. All right, hopefully everybody got a chance to uh, read the minutes. If there are any, any discussion or somebody want to make a motion to approve I'll make minutes. a motion to accept them, McLaughlin. Okay. I'll second it, Mike Baden. Okay, all right. All those opposed? Very good. Minutes approved. All right, any, any uh, education or training opportunities anyone wants to talk about. Okay, moving on. How about community reports? Yeah, I have uh, one here, McLaughlin. So Central Hudson, along with uh, its contractor, Mullen and Sons, uh, this, this week has started an extensive um, uh, gas line re replacement project in the village of Sorgenes. It's going to take up to about four months to complete it. Uh, they're going to start in the business district, go down uh, from Main and Partition down to Russell Street, and then go from uh, Main Street down towards um, the diner and then some of the many side streets in the village. Uh, we're asking for the public's patience and understanding and cooperation with this because it's going to be, there are going to be road closures during this period of time. Uh, the business district part of it is started this week with the preparation work and it's going to continue uh, the next couple of weeks in the business district with the actual um, construction. So if anybody has any questions, um, certainly you can ask me, but uh, you can call our uh, village clerk at 845-246-2321 uh, and uh, she'll be more than happy to uh, answer wherever you know she can but we're just asking for the public's patience and, and cooperation during this period of time. It's going to replace about 10, well, over 10,000 uh, feet of uh, 
gas mains that's been deteriorated over an extensive period of time. So that's what this is going to be going on. Thanks, Vince. Anyone else? Yeah, um, town of Rochester. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> we formed we adopted a resolution uh, to create a housing advisory committee. Um, we have not uh, put out a call yet for uh, members, but we we have adopted that resolution. We also tomorrow night should be adopting our accessory dwelling unit law and uh, the moratorium that we sent to you last month for, for review. We anticipate adopting that uh, tomorrow night as well for a, a six month moratorium. Okay. Um, I have one from uh, one or two from Olive. So back on our town board meeting on May 10th, uh, we did uh, adopt the short-term rental law that was before the county planning board last month. Um, we made a few tweaks, including the ones that the county planning board recommended, but it has been approved and um, registration for permits started today. So it should be an exciting time for our building department over the next several months. Um, <clears throat> I think that's all I got for Olive. Anybody else? Repco is holding a public hearing as of now at the Ulster Town Hall on their project on, on uh, the old motel. Oh, okay. I don't know what the turnout will be considering the weather, but I would expect it to be pretty good. <clears throat> I have, well, it's not really a community report. I just have more of a question like on these meetings, these Zoom meetings. I was wondering how much longer we're going to stay with Zoom meetings. Uh, in some ways I like it, it saves me the driving. I got to figure 40 minutes usually each way for driving, but I think we're losing something and not have face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, my time is so, Tom shorter, but. But I think new members can start from it. Sorry to interrupt, Tom. Um, my understanding of the emergency um, proclamation from the governor is it was extended till June 15th. And after June 15th, we still do not know. So unless we hear something different by July, we'll be meeting in person. Okay. I, I agree with you, Tom. I, I very much want to get back to in person, but. Uh... And we don't, you know, we don't really have a great place that we can meet in person and, and have some reasonable distancing between ourselves. I realize that, but uh, there's something you get from being, I think, especially for the newer members, you get from being in an in-person absolutely that you don't get from being on this. Is it in, in all, of, all of our town board meetings, planning board, zoning board are all in person right now, but then again, not very many people show up to those meetings, so it's not a big problem for us. Okay, any other community reports? All right, moving on. Um, I have nothing for the uh, chairman report, so I'll turn it over to Dennis for the financial report. Thank you, Drew. Uh, just just a quick update. We're currently um, we're we're in really good shape financially right now in terms of where we are in, in this year's budget. We're currently starting, believe it or not, next year's budget, uh, which is due, I believe, next week. Um, so we're starting at we're starting at budget um, at budget cycle, not only with respect to the operating budget, but but also with respect to the capital program. Um, so we'll be we'll be doing that right now. Um, major expenditures that we have got coming up that's not reflected in the current financial report is we're currently engaged in in, um, in hiring a uh, consultant for a um, railroad uh, rail safety study in the city of Kingston. Uh, we are through the interview process and are working through. Um, some budget numbers uh, with the with the two finalist consultants that um, that we that we that applied. 
Uh, we are also just signed a contract with uh, Creighton Manning uh, for the Route 9W study in the town of Ulster. Uh, that contract is around $120,000 for that work. And we're currently, if anybody sees uh, uh, various uh, traffic counters out, that's the Transportation Council's traffic counters. We have about, I think, 80 locations we're counting uh, this go around. And plus we're cameraing, we have some cameras out as well, or, or will have cameras out as well at some intersections um, to, on, on camera work. So we are spending some money uh, relative to the Transportation Council, which is where most of the professional services uh, dollars reside. Um, and we currently have um, we currently have funding uh, that we're spending on website development and also on a housing smart communities initiative uh, that are in contract and we're about halfway through uh, that particular work. Um, so that's where we are in a budget process. Uh, next year's budget is probably going to look similar to this year's budget, um, with some concern about what's happening with respect to the economy. Any All questions? Right. All right, thanks, Dennis. Now I'm going to move. I'm going to move oh, on to the ahead. environmental report. Sure, Andrew, that's okay. I have nothing to add. Anybody has any questions on the environmental listings? Okay. From a communication standpoint, I really don't have anything to add on the, those communications that we received. It was all the one that was there was the Woodstock Artists Association 28 Tinker Street uh, for its nomination as a as a listed a listed property on the National Register. Okay. Special topics discussion. The only thing I can tell you is we're currently um, redoing our. Uh, let me let me talk rail trails first. Uh, we're currently redoing our environmental work on the Kingston Rail Trail. We've been, uh, what ends up happening on these, uh, these projects, if they, if they take a while to move through the, the review process, the federal government is now making you go back and redo the environmental work. Uh, so we're doing that right now. We anticipate that we can get approval hopefully by the end of this month and certainly hopefully by next month, depending upon we're wait, we're, the only comments we're waiting from is from U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, right now. Uh, if they don't make us go out and resurvey the corridor, then I think we're in good shape. If they do make us resurvey the corridor, it may take longer. We're trying to get this out to bid and awarded prior to September, because at the end of September, that's the end of the federal fiscal year. And then I have to move money from uh, between fiscal years, which is not easy to do. So that's the first rail trail. The second rail trail is the Midtown Linear Park. Uh, we have uh, contractors working to finish that. We've run into some difficulties with respect to the stairs at Elmendorf Street. Um, we can't meet the elevations of the new bridge with our stair with our stair uh, design. So we're in the process of redesigning the stairs and working with adjoining landowners to get necessary right away uh, for that. Uh, we've been successful in making some changes to our contract uh, and responsibilities under the federal aid process. And we'll process those new stair locations and acquisition of lands under the county's uh, authority rather than under uh, the federal aid process, which could delay us many, many, many months. Uh, if that, if we're successful, we, we hope to be finished again by the end of the summer. Well, we would be able to turn the, turn the contractor out from the federal aid process uh, very, very shortly, hopefully, if that's the case, if, we, if we're successful in making the, in making the change. Uh, we, we still await, sure. I'm sorry, I, I didn't Somebody know you were question. going, go ahead. Uh, we're, still, we're still in the process of looking at um, a site for the um, Emergency Management Center, or otherwise known as the Government Operations Center. There is a resolution going through the legislature this month uh, to acquire lands in New Paltz uh, for that government operations center. Uh, we'll know whether or not um, we have a site by the end of uh, June. Uh, we continue to advance designs for that center um, and we continue to advance our necessary work uh, relative to that, um, relative to that um, 
the the work that we need to do whether to that site plan and that uh, and literally the the, the site layout or the building layout uh, for that area. Uh, we also have a uh, had an on-site meeting today. Uh, we have funded, the county has funded the demolition of the Ulster County Jail, the former Ulster County Jail and other, um, and other uh, buildings associated with the Golden Hill Project uh, that is on our agenda tonight uh, for review from the city planning office, um, the city planning board. Um, that uh, we had a site, uh, a site visit today for, for those contractors that are uh, seeking to bid on that demolition. Uh, that demolition was funded by the legislature in a May resolution. Uh, and then the only thing I would say to you is, is that there is, um, there is a con uh, community, the consolidated funding application, excuse me, the consolidated funding application from the state is out. I would urge every community and every board member to go back to their communities and ask them to look at the CFA and see what they're eligible for. In particular, I would make sure that you understand that there's money in here for planning work, there's money in here for housing, uh, and there's money in here for economic development activities, particularly as it re relates to small businesses. And, and you should reach out to your chambers of commerce if you have them in your community and your business associations and indicate now is the time to essentially, if you're looking at expansion of your business, you're looking at additional work that you need to do to make your business solvent now is the time to take a look at these uh at, at this uh at this effort that's here um and this this funding opportunity that's here dennis isn't Any there questions um, on that Dennis, isn't there funding for um nomination studies for brownfields in there too that's correct thank you robert i was going to i was going to mention it and i'm glad you did but there is also a brownfield nomination studies in there uh, we have had a conversation with Patterns for Progress uh, with respect to um, it's with respect to we did a pre-nomination study at the county level. We identified five areas. We've now had a conversation with Patterns for Progress to move that pre one of those five areas for pre-nomination to move it to a nom a nom a nomification <laughs> nomination study. I'm sorry, I don't know why I got extra vowels in here tonight. Uh, a nomination study, um, and uh, we ha they, we haven't had uh, the follow up conversation to see if they've chosen a location. We've suggested Kingston, Rochester, Ellenville, uh, and Saugerties were the ones that uh, that we've identified, and they're looking at all of them uh, right now and asking us some questions with respect to that. The housing oper the housing smart communities initiative. Uh, is engaged right now. We anticipate that we should finish up and have a site rollout. For that work, I think by the end of July, if not certainly by the end of August, uh, that website will go live, and the uh, the scoring points to, to join a uh, to join the Housing Smart Initiatives program at the county will be available by that particular point in time. That's all. There are a number of other things that we're currently engaged in. The, the Transportation Council is currently updating its tip which is a transportation improvement program. Uh, we've been able to secure an additional funding for uh, the town of Lloyd, otherwise for the Tilson Avenue project, that's about $1.7 million in overruns that they had with respect to their bid documents that came back. Uh, so we were able to secure that funding. We were also looking to secure additional funding for the Kingston Rail Trail. Uh, and additional funding for Cahonkson side, the sidewalks in Cahonkson um, at this particular point in time. We did not have a call for additional projects. Uh, there are, in spite of the fact that everyone thought there was going to be substantial amount of additional federal funds available through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, this, this allocation to this MPO and to this, and to this region of the state is exactly the same as what it was uh, in 2020. Uh, so we've seen no additional funds uh, mm -hmm. associated with uh, with that. Uh, we are uh, going to break ground on the we on the veteran cemetery in New Paltz. Um, they had a groundbreaking on Memorial Day. Uh, we have a project kick, kickoff meeting scheduled, uh, I think, next week, and we should be able to begin construction uh, very soon thereafter. Those contracts are signed uh, on that project. 
uh, and we're continuing to work with the Office of Emergency Management with respect to tower sites. There are existing tower sites in Saugerties that are under construction. We've identified tower sites in Rosendale. Uh, we're working with the town of Rochester and the town of Rochester supervisor for a site in, in, in Rochester. Uh, and we're looking at multiple sites up in the Shandaken corridor, um, the through 28 corridor uh, to service that area as well. The county is moving to a simulcast uh, system for its, uh, for its emergency, emergency management uh, and that's necessitating a number of new towers uh, to be constructed. Uh, we are designing those towers so that uh, in the future they can support additional cell facilities if necessary, as well as something called point to multi point broadband, uh, so that we may be able to provide broadband service from our emergency, uh, our emergency towers in certain locations. Uh, we are under design for another tower or a replacement tower on Tanchi Mountain in the town of Olive. Um, so we, we, should be, um, we should be going through that process um, very shortly to know whether we're gonna replace the tower or repair the tower. Uh, we have structural folks that are gonna start, I think next week uh, to take a look at that tower to see what we have to do, whether we can repair it or have to replace it. Any questions? Dennis, Vince here. Um, so you already answered the uh, thing about the emergency management center, so thank you. Uh, but the question I have about the Golden Hill housing project, uh, mm -hmm. once you uh, the county demolishes that this summer, when would you, from like the beginning of the project to, you know, occupancy, how long are they estimating that that go? Rather than have me answer it, Vince, it is on our agenda tonight for review as a site plan. I'm going to ask the, as part of the work, and I know that the, that we have representatives from Penrose here tonight. They okay. can answer that question as part of the review. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Dennis, Mike Baden, for the nomination for the Brownfield. Um, should we as a municipality reach out to Pattern for Progress or are they gonna reach out to us or what's the status on that? I would think that if you are really interested and want to be part of that nomination study, then you should reach out and okay. you can reach out. I'll give you the, if you reach out to me tomorrow, I'll give you the email addresses, Mike, and okay. who we're dealing with. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for Dennis or comments? Then let's move on to um, public comments. Looks like uh, Robert, we got a number of people there, maybe 10 or 11. Sure. So if you'd like to speak, now is your only opportunity to do so. Please raise your hand and we'll open the floor to you. Nobody's raising their hand, so I guess we can move on. All right. So, so let's move on to uh, zoning referrals. You want to start from the top, Robert? No, we have a few presentations tonight. So oh, we do. Okay. I'm going to start with the Kingstonian. Okay. And I think uh, we have some Dennis Doyle doppelgangers on here who are uh, Mike Moriel and Scott Dudden in here. So I'll let them share their screen if they don't already have that ability. Uh, uh, so, so are there any abstentions for the, uh, or recusals, I'm sorry, for the city of Kingston? All right, let's move on then. Scott's still here. Uh, Rob, Scott Dutton here. Uh, I'm clicking the share. You should be able to raise your, share your screen. When I click the share screen button, it says host disabled participant. Okay, let me check it. Oh, I don't have a security tip. That's annoying okay. one sec while you're doing okay, you know what I'm gonna do I'm, I have an easier easier way to do this let's let me do this one okay I'll just make you a co-host temporarily okay. than... while you're doing that I should note that Mike Moriello the project attorney is on as well Mike do you want to unmute so that you can uh, correct me if I misspeak at any time sure Hello to everybody. 
Scott is going to make a quick presentation, and uh, then we can try and answer questions or do yeah, you know so in the board the problem I'm having. <laughs> And in, in the run up to this, while Rob uh, gets the screen share working, um, let me just say thank you for giving us uh, this time tonight. My name is Scott Dutton. I am a resident of the city of Kingston, a principal of Dutton Architecture, been practicing here in Ulster County uh, for 25 years. Um, I am relatively new to this project, which has been in the public forum for roughly five years. Um, I joined the team about a year ago as I was wrapping up a, a major development project of my own and couldn't participate for my uh, friends and frequent clients, um, Brad Jordan uh, and the Jordan family uh, on this one in, in the initial stages. I'm gonna do a brief presentation tonight um, while Rob's working on, on this, I'll just talk about the highlights. You should have access now, Scott. Okay, okay great. Yep. Um, in, in short, I would expect that most of the members of the board are familiar with the Kingstonian project, um, which goes back to a successful DRI award for the city of Kingston, a $10 million award that specifically noted this uh, project. It is 130 market rate apartments, 14 affordable apartments, essentially the replacement and then some of the parking garage that was torn down um, many years ago that I know a thing or two about. Um, that parking garage was in jeopardy of collapse on any given Tuesday, and the uptown community has uh, suffered from the lack of available parking. Um, a small boutique hotel, 32 rooms, just under 9,000 square feet of commercial space, and a much larger uh, public plaza than the uh, public space that's, that's there presently. Um, as a brief recap to the revisions to the project that I'm going to take you through with some nice 3D visuals here. Um, in short, when we joined the team, we internalized the feedback from the community um, that the project developers had, had received and made a series of um, revisions to the project. We reduced the overall scale of the building along Schwank Drive from three floors to two floors. We had a, um, a, a major reduction in overall scale and height of the building by removing an entire floor. Um, we relocated a pedestrian bridge that had been a part of the project all along, shortening its distance um, and softening its uh, appearance. We refined the, the building elevations, which you're going to see here in a few seconds. We added stoops along Schwank Drive, uh, strengthening a, a more pedestrian friendly connection between the residential apartments and Schwank Drive um, from the design that uh, the public had been seeing for the four previous years. We relocated uh, loading and trash to minimize the impacts on primary streets. We enhanced the public plaza um, and made a significant number of refinements there um, and defined a place for public bathroom accommodations directly off of the, the plaza. So I should say, Mike, do you want to jump in and say anything here about where we are with Seeker for the, the board before I go into the visuals? Yeah, I mean, I can give a little bit of context since I spend a raft of time up at the appellate division <laughs> arguing all the lawsuits. Um, there's been seven lawsuits brought by Neil Bender and his coterie of supporters um, he's got seven or eight lawyers working on it. In my 
estimation. These are all non-competition lawsuits. Um, they use the environment as a pretext for the uh, business agenda that Mr. Bender has. Um, but that bit of uh, editorializing aside, there's been seven lawsuits um, that have taken on every aspect of the project. We've won all of them. Um, there's four pending in the appellate division right now that we're doing. We just had an argument yesterday on uh, the lawsuit against the Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. The NEG deck was granted February 16th, 2019. It's a very, very lengthy and comprehensive document, 70 some pages, single spaced. Um, it it uh, was upheld by Judge Mott in court, and I expect that it will be upheld by the appellate division, uh, too. Um, the project has also received a preliminary approval for a lot line revision, um, which was necessary to merge lots together for the project, um, Total the total acreage um, being 2.74 or something like that. The, uh, the, it has also received approval from the Historic Landmarks and Preservation Commission with the HAC, the um, uh, also uh, participating. That has, not, that has not occasioned a lawsuit yet, although I expect one will be coming soon with that. Um, as far as where we are presently in, well, I should also say, although I'm not involved, um, well, I'm peripherally involved, but I'm not the attorney of record. Um, there's been uh, lawsuits brought against the IDA for the grant of the pilot. Um, there's a pending lawsuit with uh, road closure of uh, the extension, um, the, uh, the extension uh, street coming up from towards the, the, uh, the plaza. Um, there is uh, another zoning, uh, an affordable housing lawsuit still pending out there that, that really doesn't affect us. Um, but at any rate, the, uh, where we are in the process now is we are going through site plan and special use permit um, reviews. Um, site plan and special use permit reviews were all examined under the, uh, under the negative declaration. Um, and uh, so we, we have work to do, um, but the project refinements have been universally well received, even by the opposition. Um, the design refinements um, have, been, have been commented on to be um, far nicer than what the original design was. And I, and I echo that. I think since Scott got involved in the project, it's uh, taken on a totally different, um, really a totally different feel and a really good um, fit with, with the area um, and the historic stockade district. So we, I expect that we will still be in the uh, site plan and special use permit process for a while. We've had, we've had um, public hearing on that the rezoning of the property, we had to rezone a very, very, and I forgot, I'm sorry, uh, I, I, I'm uh, remiss for forgetting this, that we had to, re we had to rezone a, a 0 0.13 acre par par portion of the property um, so that um, to conform with the historic stockade district and allow for multifamily use on that site. That rezoning, has been completed, com totally completed, and is was upheld by the court in a separate lawsuit on the rezoning. Um, the uh, so I, I would expect that we're going to be going through administrative review with the planning board for the next several months too before we can get to a point where um, the board may feel comfortable giving um, some kind of a conditional approval, which is what we would hope for. That's where we are presently. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, I just, if I can editorialize just for 15 seconds to say somewhat ironic that uh, we've been the architects for the majority of the new housing built here in the city of Kingston, 
and seem to face opposition every time we uh, did Lace Mills Lofts, Energy Square, and Landmark Place, all affordable housing projects. And we face opposition and concern from the community. And here we are uh, presenting in a, a market rate project and again, face opposition <laughs> and concern. Uh, it's just an irony of uh, the times, I guess. Uh, let me jump right into this presentation, which is a compare and contrast. Um, you will see the images that the, that, that the public had the opportunity to view um, for the first four years of the project presented at various stages by the developers. Uh, in the lower left-hand corner, you can see um, where it was, what we have in the upper right-hand corner, what we have presented to the City of Kingston Planning Board, the Landmarks Commission, uh, Historic Landmarks Preservation Commission, and the Heritage Area Commission. And in the upper right-hand corner, those, um, the Heritage Area Commission and the Landmarks Preservation Commission have um, responded favorably. Um, uh, just briefly, you'll see that a reduction in overall scale, the, uh, the elimination of an entire floor, um, a much more interactive relationship between the, the building facade and the, the pedestrian way, um, more uh, three-dimensionality, if you will, with the, with the stoops, uh, which are sort of an echo to um, your traditional uh, brownstone type stoop that, that you would see um, in the urban area. The bridge, which in the lower left-hand corner you'll see was more towards the west and much longer, has been shortened, moved to the east, and now has a, uh, a bend in it. Close-up view, you start to see more contextual responses to um, more traditional details. Balconies are now recessed and expressed, whereas previously um, the balconies had been carve-outs from a facade that was a, um, a flatter plane. This is a view from Schwenk Drive uh, with your back to Kingston Plaza. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with, with Kingston. Uh, entrance to the parking garage uh, off of Schwenk Drive here with two entrances to the parking garage. View from North Front Street, uh, the initial uh, design, the refined design. Again, you'll start to see a theme here. Uh, with more three-dimensionality, more contextual, familiar details. Um, and all of this, I assume, Rob and Dennis, the board has had the opportunity to view prior to tonight's meeting. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, all the plans and everything have been available to them for about a week. Okay. Great, so I, I don't wanna to monopolize tonight's meeting, so I'll move briskly and then I can always circle back if there are questions. Close up view here uh, from North Front Street. This is the entrance only to the parking garage. Um, internally, we've been working with Walker uh, Consultants, which is the nation's leader in uh, parking garage consulting to uh, work out the layout so that resident parking and public parking are differentiated and controlled. Um, but any visitor to an uptown business uh, clearly has an identifiable entrance at the end of Wall Street to avail themselves of um, the much needed public parking. You see in the background here the, the plaza the boutique hotel, which we'll see in the next renderings. Another view, this would be uh, with my back to the east facing somewhat northwest, uh, Senate garage on your left. The initial design for the boutique hotel um, seen here in the lower left-hand corner, the refined design, which is um, more sympathetic to the original architecture of the, the building, the original 
hotel, which you'll see momentarily in this view. In short, what we've done here is try and emulate the, um, the scale and, and rhythm of the original building where the initial design had much more fenestration to it and was um, more of a contemporary interpretation. Uh, floor plans, this is the lower level and I'll move through these quickly. Um, off of Schwenk Drive, visitors will be able to come off of Schwenk Drive, get access to parking uh, from both sides. There's a pedestrian um, set, stair that leads from the pedestrian plaza that you'll see at the North Front Street level. Here is that relocated, and I'm assuming you can see my cursor, okay. the relocated pedestrian bridge that gets you from North Front Street across Schwank Drive to a handicapped accessible elevator and a, a stair down and uh, lands you at the entrance to the Kingston Plaza. Hmm. Parking garage level two, three. I think uh, we'll pause here for a second. This is the North Front Street plan where we have commercial spaces in this uh, uh, teal gray color here. Restaurant bar, uh, ho uh, boutique hotel lobby entrance, the, the public plaza we have here. I'll, I'll talk about that further, but uh, our landscape architects have developed a full plan that's been submitted to the city of Kingston with a tremendous amount of detail, planting plan, lighting plan. Uh, we've coordinated with the fire department uh, for firefighting apparatus on that. Uh, Chief Ray has uh, given sworn testimony that uh, they can serve and will serve. And let's see here, this uh, sort of rose color, it's the leasing office, clubhouse amenities. Uh, you have apartments in the, the green, uh, gray green here, apartments in the gray green on the opposite side. So we have two buildings on uh, opposite sides of this pedestrian plaza. Um, this is a uh, an amenity space with a pool, barbecue grills, a place to play cornhole um, for the, the residents that's kind of tucked to the western side at the North Front Street elevation. As you go up in plans, everything here that's in the gray green are uh, apartments. The red color here are the boutique hotel rooms, sixth floor, and finally seventh floor there. Uh, you'll find building elevations in your package. It's a view, uh, an elevation view looking towards the north with the boutique hotel uh, and restaurant on the right residents on the upper floors on the left-hand side, entrance to the parking garage at the end of Wall Street and retail spaces. Elevation view from Schwenk Drive well, with a large um, public set of stairs to get up to North Front Street, strengthening pedestrian connections between Schwenk and North Front. This uh, pedestrian bridge here Along this set of stairs, there will be a, a bike runnel that was specifically requested during the, um, the public comment period, um, which I should add, um, there was a fair amount of public comment and input that helped influence the design and we were able to respond to and provide answers to the, the various boards that have already reviewed this project, Heritage Area Commission. Historic Landmarks Preservation Commission. And while we're not done with the City of Kingston Planning Board, um, we have had a number of meetings presenting this, this design to them. 
close up rendering that was generated in specific response to questions by the Historic Landmark Preservation Commission. Um, the question from the chairman, I, I believe it came from the chairman, Mark Rumblatt, was about the interior elevations of that courtyard. Um, were they flat? Uh, what were the materials? Uh, we provided samples of the, uh, the materials that the board wanted to see, left them down at the city planning office uh, for an extended period of time, um, well over a month, maybe even two. And what you see here in, in these renderings is that there's a tremendous amount of three-dimensionality um, in the courtyard. They're not flat skin facades. Uh, you have a lot of articulation, um, shade, shadow, balconies that recess, building elements that protrude. Uh, protrude. You, you, you have kind of a, a blend of traditional architecture with some contemporary elements. Um, here's a close-up view with the restaurant on the right and commercial space on the left, um, catenary lights for the first 25%, 30% of the, the plaza to create interest, uh, vibrancy, oh, interesting spaces for, um, for people to be drawn to, to um, avail themselves of those new businesses. Another internal view of the plaza looking to the east, there is a, a public per pergola element um, in that plaza. The thinking is that things like the Snowflake Festival, um, you know, there might be music from time to time, but trying to create a, um, a dynamic public space that, uh, that supports the businesses and is um, drawing people to uptown Kingston. You see a variety of materials, textures here. The clapboard that's represented would be hardy plank. These uh, wooden elements would be uh, something like a boral, which is um, which is a, a green product that that the tools like wood, uh, so that we can create traditional. Uh, vernacular architectural elements here in this space. I think uh, with that, I will step off and take questions, if there are any. So Scott, if I may, uh, from the board members, I apologize. Just, I just got a couple things if I think you could address. One would be um, if someone could basically say where you are on the studies that you've done, water, sewer, traffic, et cetera. And then last, I know that you have worked with some of the, um, the energy efficiency elements of the project. If you could talk about them as well. Sure, I'll take, I'll take energy first um, and then let Mike answer the, the studies question. There, um, our, our firm is no stranger to uh, working with the alphabet soup of uh, the, the variety of uh, agencies out there that do certifications. Um, it's a complex world. Uh, we recently received um, lead platinum for our Energy Square project, which was a publicly funded project through New York State. Um, even there with all of that support and public financing, it was never certain until it was certain. The applicant has, um, has publicly stated that we will design to one of the silver standards, um, whether it's enterprise communities um, or one of the other ones, uh, it's too early in the game to, to say, but we will strive for that and we will uh, we'll design to it. Scott, this is Drew Bogus. Um, the public uh, area which you're showing was pretty nice, but 
ultimately, who is responsible for maintaining that? The developer is, um, and Mike, jump in if I is speaking at any time here. The, the city, my understanding of the way uh, this finally settled out is that the city continues to own the land and that the developer pays for the improvements and the developer pays for the maintenance of this space. Is that accurate, Mike? That, that's correct. It'll be a permanent easement there. Okay, thanks. I think the, sh the short answer is the public has access, the developer has responsibility for, for maintenance. I, Mike, can you address I, the studies or not? Yeah, yeah, the hey. studies, um, I'm pretty familiar with the, with the studies. We, um, and just so the board knows too, the studies were um, in all instances, peer reviewed by Sue Cahill as the principal planner, uh, Kyla Haber, or Kyla D-Day as, uh, as the associate planner. And also um, they, the board hired its own traffic consultant um, and had John Schultesis look at engineering aspects too. The project engineer is Dennis Larios, um, who I know everyone here is familiar with. Um, and in conjunction with uh, Dennis organizing a lot of the studies, we did a full traffic study with supplemental studies along the way. We also did um, geotechnical studies, water and sewer, endangered and threatened species, archeological, which was a very important study. That's with Joe Diamond. Dr. Diamond is a professor at uh, SUNY New Paltz who I have tremendous respect for. We also did a demolition study, architectural study, stormwater um, and economic study associated with um, the, the pilot, not with the neg deck, as the board probably knows, you can't justify a neg deck on economics. So um, economics were not part of the negative declaration um, uh, aspect. But all of those studies, including a zoning, comprehensive zoning analysis, were all part of the, were part of the record in addition, we had um, up until the most recent meetings with the HLPC, we had over 25 meetings and five public hearings. Um, now we are near 30 meetings, I think totally on the project. Um, there was also a full, I, I, uh, I should have said, there was a full visual simulation too um, that, that was done from just about every conceivable angle and <laughs> viewpoint that, that you can think of. Um, so it was, a, it was a very comprehensive and, and lengthy review um, all, all told. And like I said, all of those studies have been upheld in court at the Supreme Court le level so far. We haven't Thanks. had any decisions from the appellate division. All right, Mike Ben has his hand up. <laughs> Yeah, um, a couple things. First, for the for the board, I Dennis invited me to sit in on the gateway meeting, and I asked about the stormwater runoff uh, along that uh, um, area because of the steepness. And I don't know if if Mike or Dennis, I mean uh, Mike or uh, Scott, if you want to, if you could address that for the board, because I'm sure that may be a concern of some other people. And then I had a second question on the traffic pattern to get into the parking garage from North Front. I just had some questions about what, what that's really going to entail. Is, is that going to restrict the left left hand turn in? So I'm guessing that's directly across from Wall Street. Correct. The, but, the entrance to the parking aligns with Wall Street. Right. But if somebody was coming, since, Wall, since North Front is two-way there, is it going to be restricted to no left in and a right, right in or straight in only? Or because I'm just, it, it just jumps out at me that a left turn there could be problematic. 
Well, we, we envision a, a right turn in coming from this direction, straight from Wall Street, and there have not been any conversations about restricting a left turn in okay. since it's signalized there. Oh, and it, it, it will remain signalized. Okay, then yeah. that answers my question. As long as it's remaining signalized, because right now it's just a flashing signal, yeah. so. And as far as uh, storm water goes, I can take that question. This pedestrian plaza is, um, the stormwater will be collected with a, uh, a basin at North Front Street and Fair Street. The first, uh, say, 20 to 25% of the plaza is at grade, and then you're over the parking garage. All of the stormwater management will be conveyed to Schwenk Drive and uh, treated for water quality here um, before it uh, goes to the municipal system. The parking deck itself, the, or the plaza, will be a, a pedestal paver detail. So stormwater will go through the pedestal pavers, hit the, um, the management system, internal drains, all of which mm -hmm. will uh, come down to Schwenk Drive and be treated. All right, Mr. Murray had a question. Yeah, hi. Uh, <clears throat> William Murray, uh, I wonder if you could circle back to the energy aspect. It looks to me that you've got, how many square feet of flat roof do you have approximately? I don't have that data point off the top of my head. Um, if you're asking about the opportunity for solar, th this is an all electric building, but yeah. for, um, we, we anticipate air source heat pumps. So we're gonna need a, uh, the majority of that roof for condensing units and we'll wanna bring them in from the, the, uh, the cornice line. Um, the only fossil fuels that we can think of in the project might be a natural gas hookup for a fire pump, which would only get used at exercise, periodic exercising. And then of course, natural gas for the, the restaurant. Right, so at, at, at this point, just heat pumps on the roof, no PVs? Yeah, I, I doubt that we're gonna have room for any PV after we locate all of those condensing units up there. We have certainly discussed it. Uh, I'm an advocate for it in my own development projects. Uh, most recently, the, the Fuller building, I have a 47 kW array there. Um, we, de we designed the largest array, to my knowledge, in the city of Kingston at Energy Square. Um, you know, it, it makes sense now but I, I'm not sure that we're gonna have enough real estate by the time we make all the penetrations for um, all the plumbing penetrations, all the exhaust penetrations and locate all of the, uh, the, the, conden the, the condensers up there for the heat right. pumps. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Mr. Rudikoff. <clears throat> yes, thank, <clears throat> thank you. Hi, Mike, hi, uh, Scott. Um, so great, great presentation, uh, very, very competent, very sophisticated, and very, very attentive to uh, uh, communications that resulted in what's going to be a great project. Uh, I wanted to really raise the comment that Scott made about every project that he's proposed that's been subsidized housing or, or what has been roundly criticized, greatly adding to the cost of this kind of housing. And then coincidentally, one of our board members talked about a housing advisory task force and you know, I represented another uh, uh, um, uh, uh, market rate apartment on Lucas Avenue in Kingston, and the neighbors were out there, you know, fighting this in a really ugly way. Uh, and everything was known about this multifamily zone. And I think that our response to this should also comment on the need for this kind of housing and how it comports with the kind of planning the county has done, and that adding this kind of housing is really sound, sustainable planning. So it's sort of a gratuitous comment in the, in the aspect of the things we normally comment on. But I think a comment like that could be very important. And I would support us making that kind of comment to try to strengthen the, 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 the resolve of people trying to do this kind of housing, because it's a long haul. 
Matt, uh, this is Mike. I appreciate that uh, sincerely. And I can also say too, that the genesis of the affordable housing component that was added to this project came from the third floor office. <laughs> First persons that mentioned it to me were Rob and Dennis. They, they insisted that the project had, should have an affordability component to it. Um, and that was brought back to the clients and they, and they did a 10% affordable housing um, uh, project. Um, and that, that, came the, the, that came directly <laughs> from, as my, as my law partner used to say, ex cathedra. So that's <laughs> yeah. You know, I I, I don't want to um, take too much time on this, but it's not a zero sum game. We should be building more housing because we need it, more affordable housing, and more market rate housing. <laughs> that's the dynamic that's of the morphology of of communities. If you're not if you're not in this state, uh, you're stagnant. Uh, Ms. Lanza and Ms. Gatto. Um, just wanted to follow up, I think, on the, the concept that um, Mr. Murray started about the, um, you know, efficiency of energy. Have you considered geothermal instead of the air pumps, heat pumps, but to consider geothermal? Since you're going to be doing a lot of excavation and going down underground and doing things like that. If you look closely at the site, you'll see that um, we've there, there's not a lot of negative space here in this property. So um, while we have a, a fair amount of experience with geothermal, we, we I mean it could be under your buildings, you know. We have piles under your buildings. Yes, we have uh, helical pile support. So. Um, I, I would have to say that this site does not lend itself to geothermal or on-site geothermal. And we have experience with geothermal. We're about to embark on um, another major geothermal project here in the city of Kingston for a 67,000 square foot building. Um, but this site is not a very good candidate for it. Um, nor based on the geotechnical analysis, does it have, um, have the right types of soils that you would wanna to see to get good conductivity. All right, now Cindy can go ahead. Um, I, I was wondering uh, how much EV uh, charging you have uh, in the parking garage and whether or not it's gonna be public or or how much is going to be dedicated to uh, uh, people who are renting there? Well, we, we do have uh, EV and in there. I don't have the data point of exactly how many, but there will be both public EV uh, parking opportunities and resident EV opportunities. And the plan is to um, set up the infrastructure so that it's scalable and more charging stations can be added. Um, off. I, I forgive me for not remembering um, the exact percentage, whether it was five percent or or ten percent, but um, EV will definitely be in the plan. All right. And as, as a developer owner, I can. Uh, I, I'm walking the walk that I'm talking, uh, we just ordered a number of EV chargers for our, our own project on 79 Hurley Avenue. So um, it, it's, it's where we are, it's where we're headed. And the project has a responsibility under the building code to put a certain number of spaces in, um, but the developer in order to be successful here um, and have the, the units marketable knows that they have to build the infrastructure in so that as we get closer and closer to 100% electric vehicles, that infrastructure is there. The least expensive time to put that infrastructure in is now. All right, Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, Scott and Mike, thank you very much for the presentation tonight. Um, the one question I have is how many 
units, apartments, uh, mind you, are going to be set aside for as affordable apartments? Uh, 14, and they will not be segregated. They'll be spread throughout the, the building and um, in a variety of types of units. Um, and there's a total of how many units? In the it's, it's a 10% affordable housing um, ratio. Yeah, which is, I think there, there's 139 apartment units, I think, total. Okay, I, I'm just trying to, you know, know how, how many there are and, yep. but thank you. Yep. Anybody else, Robert? Nope. So why don't we go to recommendations and uh, All right, start I'll with share. that? I'm going to share my screen then. Rob, I Scott, think, if you could. Uh, Rob, I think uh, Miss Welton had her hand up. Oh, go ahead, Vivian. Uh, yes, it's not a question. I'm just blown away by the improvements and the visuals. Uh, I think the original design looked like a prison. I was horrified, <laughs> and now I love it. I, yep. I can't. I can't say it enough. I agree. Uh, everybody, sees, everybody can see my screen, right? Yes. All right. So, so, so Scott, why don't you give Vivian your card, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as we know, it's a 427 space parking garage, 143 apartments, 10% set aside for 14 units, 32 hotel rooms, 8,000 square foot of retail, public space, an ADA accessible bridge with elevator, uh, EV charging stations, as you mentioned, and going to be built to at least lead silver or enterprise green community standards. There is also, I believe, a 25% reduction in impervious surface, which the applicant didn't mention. And eight, the HLPC and SHPO have both issued no adverse impact letters from this. So our comments are really focused on a... So first, let me just do the items of notes. So we, we note that A, they removed that story from original proposal. It relates much better to the street. And they put those brownstone elements down on Schwenk Drive, so they lowered the whole thing. It relates much more to the uh, pedestrian network down there. Uh, the move of the bridge reduced the length of the bridge. It changed it from a covered bridge, which was enclosed, to what I suppose is supposed to represent the uh, Rosendale trestle, or look a little bit like that. Um, I mentioned that. They have a lot more detail with respect to the plaza has been provided, including old stormwater details. Big thing that wasn't also mentioned is there's gonna be public bathrooms here. There are currently no public bathrooms to be found in Uptown Kingston, this will provide them. Uh, and I mentioned the improved architectural refinements. So, so our, Rob, before yeah, we should, go ahead, Rob, if I may, before we start, yeah, I just sure. wanna say a few things. One is, is that the project has caused a significant amount of controversy relative to uh, its approval in, in um, in going through its review processes, uh, this board. What? <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Sorry, that this is board. My um, me. Damn it. <laughs> uh, this board had um, this board had reviewed the pro the project as part of the rezoning and and as part of some of the original work that was submitted to us. Um, you, the board should be aware that in terms of its comments on the rezoning, we were hypercritical relative to the lack of affordable housing, and that has resulted in those affordable housing units you just heard mentioned being added. We also did something I think that I think the board should be proud of, proud of is, is when we originally reviewed this, there was the substantial uh, concerns and, and comments were related to the pilot. This board indicated that it had thought that, that the project in terms of an infield project, in terms of what it was doing and where it was doing it, that it deserved to be supported and that we asked and that we urged that uh, people review this and look at the project as a project, not with respect to some of the other financials that were attached to it. Um, and we did indicate at that particular point in time that one of the things that really is important with respect to urban des urban design is details. And I think that's that's been translated into the work that you're seeing tonight in terms of the amount of detail that's there, particularly with, res with respect to some of the fenestration details and architectural details, but also when I think importantly was in the original work that was done, there was no detail with respect to what was gonna happen within that pedestrian the plaza area. And now we have significant amount of detail in terms of that pedestrian plaza area, as well as 
the understanding that that pedestrian plaza is in fact controlled by the public versus controlled by the, the developer. So I just wanted to add that before we get into our, our recommendations. So a lot of our comments are actually not on site, but site adjacent to or site contiguous, I guess you could say. So I'm going to start with, as you can see there, one of our comments is about public safety with respect to North Front Street. We're talking about, so that's where you're hitting the plaza area between the two structures, the parking and loading zones, crosswalks and street lighting. I'm just gonna show you current conditions right now. So that's Fair Street. That's approximately where the plaza would be. So you have crosswalk patterns and, and the actually the image that Scott was showing before is exactly what the area we're talking about, where you have traffic coming through here. We wanna talk about some way to better define this area. I don't know if it's through markings, colorings, raising it, just to get traffic to slow down and recognize that there's pedestrian access coming into the plaza at that location. And that, and so- The thought being is, is that the, the public plaza that's being created is a, is a real amenity for Uptown. And we would expect it that, that it as well as the businesses within it will draw a lot of people crossing those roads. And we wanna make sure that there's some indication of how that's going to be handled rather than the simple crosswalks that are out there now. And we're asking both the city and, and, the, and the applicant to think about that. And then going back to Mike's comment with respect to access to the garage along this area. And there are opportunities here since you're having a parking garage being developed or opportunities to start to think about eliminating some of the parking spaces in front of the project since the availability of parking within the project is there and you can shorten things up, you can make loading zones out of them. There are a lot of things that you can do to, to remove some of the confusion that, that uh, currently soon. exists out here and will continue unless there's some work done uh, associated with the offsite, um, the offsite uh, areas in front of the plaza and in front of the project. And I think also we had a comment about adequate lighting right at that entrance area as well. Let's go back to my comments. Okay, so the other end is the other end of Fair Street, which is the pedestrian access uh, toward the Kingston Plaza. And let me go back to here. So right now the bridge is going to come over here, and then you have you'll have to cross here, which is a much shorter distance than here. But the sidewalk into the plaza is currently over in here. So anybody wanting to use a sidewalk would have to cross that distance. So some discussion, whether you're adding another sidewalk into the plaza, some means of connecting into the plaza to say, so you're basically not leaving them in a point of, you know, to improve the safety to connect them back in. So either a sidewalk and or some sort of pedestrian refuge in the middle of it to break up that walk so that they have a place to stop to allow the cars to move. So, and one of the things we thought of, Robert, can you just move a little to the west, I think would be on that, on your picture yeah. right there. So one of the things we thought of is, is there's currently three movements proposed uh, that, that exist out of, out of the, the plaza. One yeah. of them is a straight through movement into, which, which is yeah. into Fair Street, uh, with Fair right. Street closed off. And the only thing that's available now is access to the garage, there may be an opportunity to eliminate one of those movements and, and uh, grab some space in this, in this asphalt here for pedestrian access uh, and, or, and, and bike access and through those areas as well. So that was one thought. But right. the main thing is, is to get the applicant, the plaza owner and the city working together to try to come up with a better solution um, than is currently available for pedestrian access once they get off the land bridge or the aerial bridge, excuse me. <laughs> yes. All right. Let me get back to the PowerPoint. There we go. Um, so one of our concerns was the staging area. So that the plan they should have, the construction plan should have defined staging area, not just for the equipment and supplies, but also a discussion of you're eliminating over a hundred parking spaces on a temporary basis. There should be some sort of replacement of parking. They they, they should be designated as part of that planning process as well. Uh, advisory comments, yeah, and, what's that? No, and Rob, if I can, this is not all put on the applicant because these are no. public spaces and the city mm -hmm. should 
the city should work together to try to find a replacement for that parking during construction. So this is not all on the applicant itself. Right. It is literally trying to figure out how this is going to work. All of this in coordination with the city, of course. Uh, snow removal was a comment that uh, Mike Baden picked up on uh, during the uh, meeting. I mean, we know the applicant is responsible for it, but they should have some sort of plan to uh, make sure there's pedestrian access through that plaza down the stairs and over the bridge. And that's at the plaza, around. right, Robert? Yeah. What? That's in the plaza itself. Okay. Not the Kingston Plaza at the plaza of the building. In the, the, in the public space associated public with the project. Space, How's that? Not the plaza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and we just we've already been through it a number of times. We just want to make some positive comments about how the project has evolved over time, how the architecture has evolved, how the addition of the affordable housing and things of that nature have evolved and over time. Hey Rob. Hello, Dennis. Mm -hmm. This is Victor. Well, Mr. Murray first, please. Uh, just a question. Uh, maybe it's covered in some, some of the materials, but uh, what accommodations are there for bicyclists in terms of bike racks and, and access to their bikes? Uh, I'll let Scott answer that question. Sure. Um, ample bike uh, parking opportunities in the public parking garage, a bike runnel. Uh, which was uh, something that I only learned about uh, four or five months ago, so that bicyclists can go from uh, North Front Street down to, to Schwank Drive and walk up the stairs and, and run their bike through, uh, through a trough, if you will. And what was yeah. your second question? D just that, you know, in the... Uh in the buildings themselves. So all bicycle parking will be in the parking garage, is that correct? C correct, we don't have um, bike park, bike racks shown in the, in the plaza itself, um, but there's probably enough room on, on public lands up there that, um, that we could look to have a conversation with the, the city about creating another hookup opportunity. But the public parking garage definitely um, has has bike parking in it. That's uh, elevator access um, for the public from the plaza into the parking garage. And um, we have parking, bike parking and storage for residents and also for um, for visitors. Thank you. All right, uh, I public. think Mr. Marcos had a comment. Um, how many, uh businesses, the small businesses that are going to be relocated on North Front Street? That's my first question. Hello? Zero. Hello? Zero is the answer, uh, Victor. None, Victor. You have a second question? All right, now, yeah, um, now the, the mall there, that's gonna be what, that's gonna be Fair Street, right? The Fair Street extension? Correct. Can you, is that correct? That's correct, that's correct. Um, how, how long is that, uh, how long is that mall gonna be? What do you mean? I the think he's talking about square footage. Yeah. No, the, not square it's got to oh, so he's asking length of time. Length. For, in, per, per, in perpetuity? Uh, no, no, no. He's asking for dimensions, Robert. Oh, yes. Okay. Dimensions. You Scott, know, you got like, any dimensions uh, on there? I, I, I'm sorry. I don't have the, the dimensions off the top of my head. I'm still uh, kind of picking up the pieces from a long Will we have access, uh, like a fire minutes. department vehicle? Through the mall there? You, you, the fire department uh, chief, Chief Ray, and I did an extensive review of the plaza. He has issued a statement, um, an affidavit, that he can serve all areas of the project. There is an air, a fire lane where the trucks will pull in um, for the first third uh, of the site, and from there they can 
served from Schwenk Drive and from North Front Street. So he's absolutely been um, involved in the development of, of the design and approves of it. Amanda? Yes, yeah, sorry if I missed this before, but um, who's gonna be maintaining the public restroom? The developer. Okay. Drew, Rob, you wanna go over your recommendations one more time? Sure. Come on. So the public safety of North Front Street, which we discussed, parking on loading zones and crosswalks and street lighting, pedestrian access to the plaza, uh, construction staging areas and parking during construction. And then we had the advisory comments about a snow removal plan and then some positive comments about how the projects evolved over time. Those are our comments. Drew, it's Mike, Mike Baden. Uh, I make a motion to support staff comments. Second, right, Watkins. All right, very good. Any further discussion? Yeah, this is Vivian Welton. Um, what uh, times will the uh, pedestrian plaza be accessible to the public? Will there be a, a closing time where there will be no access uh, the, or to the bathrooms, for instance? Um, Mike, I'll take the curtain. Vivian, I can, I, can, I can kind of answer that. That is an ongoing discussion. It came up at, I believe, the, the most recent uh, planning board meeting was hours of operation and when things would be closed. I don't know that that has been set yet. That, that is, it's a good question. That, that was brought up, I believe, at the last planning board meeting. And if, if there's no actual barrier to access the plaza, then closing would mean someone patrolling, I would assume. I, I can make a brief comment here. Um, the There will be rules established that will be worked out with the, with the city of Kingston that will align with some of the um, standing guidelines that the city has for city parks and will be refined to address um, the unique opportunity that the public has here for greater hours, but that, that'll all be worked out um, with the city as a collaborator, as they have collaborated throughout this process. Um, on I actually had one last comment and we didn't bring it up earlier was, I was gonna ask you to do this, but do you have a phasing schedule for the project? Uh, no, not no. yet. I mean, okay. when, when, it go, when, it's, when it goes, it, it'll go. <laughs> okay. And, and that's a sore subject these days with uh, supply chain issues. <laughs> okay, anyone else on discussion? And um, all those opposed? And any abstentions? Excellent. <clears throat> Rob, it's, it, it's Mike Baden. If we can include, uh, you know, compliments along the lines of what uh, Vivian said earlier. I think that's very appropriate. Absolutely. Yeah. That was in the that was in the recommendations, Mike. It was, it was. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Scott and Michael. That was very, very helpful. All right. Well, th thank you to the board. I should, um, by the way, I do want to clarify one thing before I mention um, the principal's name of the person who we've been uh, who was the principal of the uh, various LLCs we've been fighting with <laughs> through a period of time. Um, it's actually LLCs that are bringing the lawsuits, not him personally. And I should have clarified that right. um, in the beginning. But I thank the board very much for, um, for all of its time and its, and its comments and, um, and all the attention that you've given to the project. Likewise, thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Robert, did, which one do you want to go to next? We're going to do, we're going to go right to Golden Hill. I'm going to promote some guests so they can share their presentation. Okay. Let's see if I can, if I ha have everybody right here. Let's see. Ah, there's some. Any 
And just just to clarify for the board, the, the last one we, we voted on we, that was for the the. Um, Who else do I need to promote here? With a special permit. Hey, Bubba, I got to go. My truck broke down. Do you need me to get more? No, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, super. All right, thanks. Okay, yeah, bye. bye. Hey, good evening. Uh, we'll be looking to promote Bruce Chamberlain and Roger Keating. Thank you. Done. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Or you can just, there you go. All right. So you can go ahead. Should I share my screen and get started? Yeah, go for it. All right, great. Uh, one second, everybody. Okay, can you guys see that okay? Yes. Great, and do I have Bruce and Roger here? Yes, I'm here. I'm on. All right, perfect. So we're just getting set up here. All right, uh, thank you everybody for having us here today. My name is Will Devella. I am a developer at Penrose. We are a Philadelphia headquartered real estate development and management company. Uh, I am based in our New York office, sitting in Brooklyn now, but we operate throughout the state, including in the Hudson Valley. Um, and I'm here tonight to speak to you about the Golden Hill Project. Uh, also with me here tonight is Bruce Chamberlain uh, from Wallace, Roberts, and Todd Planning and Design. Um, is a uh, landscape design planning and architecture firm operating nationwide and uh, with us uh, across most of the country and a lot of our projects. And uh, LaBella Associates, uh, Roger Keating, another premier civil engineering and land use firm um, op working on the project as our civil engineer. Uh, Roger is going to walk us through some of the site plan design and, and Bruce will walk us through the architecture. But first, I, I'd like to um, give a, a quick introduction about you know what Golden Hill is all about, um, talk a little bit about the goals of the project, where we're at, um, answer Mr. McLaughlin's question, and then I'll hand it over uh, to the designers to talk about the project design and then we'd be happy to stick around and discuss any questions you might have. So um, what is uh, Golden Hill? A uh, Golden Hill is an intergenerational, mixed income, mixed use housing community on the old uh, jail site up in Kingston. Um, so it's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, so I, what what is that exactly? It's, it is our representation and execution of the goals that the county outlined in the RFP, the goals that they set forth on you know, what they want to see done with this really premier piece of real estate in the city of Kingston and what can be best done uh, for the county with that land. Um, so what we've put together uh, is a development plan that really hopes to execute on those goals, the key parts and I'm really excited to walk you through what we have today because uh, I think it's going to be a really excelling, excellent and, and dynamic project. Um, Golden Hill is a, an intergenerational community. It's an 80 unit senior building, uh, fully accessible, really located on the probably the best part of the site uh, with really great views overlooking the mountains to the east. Um, and family housing, 84 units of family housing uh, located in another mid-rise building across the site. And then uh, two to three story townhouses spread throughout. It's affordable and uh, workforce housing. It's not just extremely deeply affordable uh, housing up on the hill, concentrating deeply, deeply affordable uh, ho housing up on an isolated site like that, we all know from past experiences that is not a successful execution. This is, uh, it's a mixed income community. It's a community of deeply affordable housing and some of the lowest AMI tiers that can be done in the state and workforce housing. Housing 
that's you know beneath market rate, but accessible to a lot of the working families in Kingston. Um, so what we're looking to execute on here is a mixed income com community of people of, of different incomes, of different ages, that can intermix and create what we hope is a really dynamic housing community. And secondly, it's a mixed use community. Um, again, as I said before, it's, it's a bit of an isolated site up on the hill in this county megaplex. So it's important to tie the site back into the community and give people the resources that lay right outside them in the, in the Kingston, uh, in the city of Kingston. So tying it in with both a physical connection and a connection to the physical sidewalk on Golden Hill Drive, but also uh, a new UCAT stop, public transportation to the site. And something that we heard doing uh, a number of our community engagement sessions in late last year, um, a mixed use, uh, which is childcare. We're gonna bring a uh, childcare center servicing both uh, toddlers and infants right to our community building as you come in to bring people who don't necessarily live at the Golden Hill community up there and to try to bring some activity up to that site. Um, and we think that's a great way to really activate this site and bring it more than just the people who are gonna live there. So in addition to the three things I mentioned, some of the other key dynamics of this development plan is to take advantage of the, just the incredible site that it is. It has just really tremendous views of the mountains and it's a beautiful wooded environment. So we've created, we've located the buildings to take advantage of those view sheds and created what we think is a really, really exciting open space plan that ties together all of the buildings and it's gonna to try to bring people from outside the buildings to intermix out in the open space. It's a great central corridor, which is probably best seen in the drawings that I'll get to in a minute, but also just a mix of active and passive outdoor uses um, from child, you know, a number of playgrounds throughout the site that are both, you know, for a variety of ages, young children, um, middle-aged children, but also adult fitness areas to more passive outdoor uses, like places to sit down and take a look at the view outside the senior center, but also planting areas and, and other features that we think people are gonna be really excited to use and, and get them outside. And we hope that those open spaces can really tie together the community and create a really dynamic and exciting community up there for people to live in. Um, last thing I wanna mention is executing on the Ulster County's Green New Deal. Uh, this is gonna be a fully electric, um, carbon neutral community that is, we really hope to be kind of a shining example of what can be done and that people can look to this project as um, what can really be an exciting example of a public private partnership with the county and can't wait to see what happens in the next project. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to, I think Roger's gonna go first. You can talk a little bit about the outdoor space and then Bruce can speak about the buildings. Yeah, thanks, Will. Um, so uh, Roger Keating, um, civil site engineer for um, Labella Associates. Um, I'm gonna walk you through some of the site plan. Um, the, the image that you just saw was just a perspective uh, elevation view looking into the site. But um, Bruce, if you could just zoom in just a little bit on that, that would be great. So we can get into the, the site. Uh, that's perfect, thank you. So um, what we have is right now, there's a 40 acre piece of property that currently houses the former jail site as well as the Ulster County Health Department. Um, as part of the project, we're subdividing out the, um, the Golden Hill project, which is the former jail area, into a separate parcel about 20 acres in size. So we'll end up sub subdividing this out. The, the health department parcel will stand on its own merit. And then we will have the jail site on its own property so that we can um, move forward with the redevelopment of the existing jail. Um, as part of this process, we're also going through the zone change to put this into the O2, dis O2 district, um, which is more consistent with this type of um, development plan as the existing county facility is located in the um, residential, one family residential district. Um, but we have the O2 district directly adjacent to us. So um, it's an easy fit for it to be um, um, rezoned 
to be in line with this type of development plan. Um, on the on the the plan, you'll see here. Um, I just want to speak to a few of the things that Will had um, spoke about. Um, Will, if you have control of it, um, just to give people some orientation as to where the senior building is located. So on the left hand side of the page, you'll see the senior building that that Will spoke about. Um, the center portion of the site um, where you see the, the various buildings and all the surrounding landscaping is where the townhome buildings are. Um, right at the top of the page is our community building. So site access is off of Golden Hill Drive. So if you're familiar with the site, there's a driveway that comes in off of Golden Hill Drive and into the, into the project. And right as you come in is where we're gonna focus with the, um, the community building. Um, we've created a loop road that goes around the, the, um, the project site and with the associated parking is off of that. And then lastly, we have the, the, the family building, which is the other um, mid-rise building that you see there on the, on the right-hand side of the site. So um, interconnectivity with the central portion of the project is, is, is key here. We have a nice central green, lots of amenities are all um, within the center portion. So we have open green space, the play areas that, um, that Will mentioned uh, for intergenerational um, play um, is all provided um, in the center and as well as on the, um, the edges of the project. It's a redevelopment project um, because the majority of the site is currently developed as the jail. We took a lot of effort in the, um, the design and the development of the, of the site to really try to compact our areas to keep things um, as much as we can to the existing developed footprint and while utilizing many of the, um, the unique characteristics of the site to capture those views. Um, with the topography that we have, we've done some things with stepping of the buildings to really work with the grade. And um, we feel that we have the orientation of the buildings to capture the views that Will um, spoke about. Um, just a few other things as it pertains to the site plan. Um, we, we mentioned access, so access to the project sites off of Golden Hill Drive. So Golden Hill Drive intersects with the Boulevard, um, which is Route 32 from DOT. Um, again, we'll come in for off of Route. Uh, we'll come in off of Golden Hill Drive, um, and we'll also have pedestrian interconnectivity um, via the um, via uh, the sidewalk that we're proposing to connect to the the sidewalk network that's also on the Department of Health's um, project site that brings you down the Golden Hill Drive. So there'll be, and there'll be good interconnectivity between the properties to get us back down the Golden Hill Drive. And then we also have a planned um, nature trail that takes you from the top of the hill down to the boulevard through um, a wooded trail um, that meanders down the hill, um, ultimately out to um, the, the, um, the shared use um, roadway there for the pedestrian and bicycle connections. Um, also on the project, we had a lot of comments through the um, through the review process as Will did a lot of public outreach with um, the neighborhoods. Um, we heard a lot of tra comments about traffic. We've done um, so we've done traffic studies of the project as a result of those traffic studies in the review by the city's engineer, as well as their consultant that was retained. Um, we, are, we are going to have a traffic signal at the intersection of uh, the Boulevard and um, Golden Hill Drive. And as well as there was a number of um, folks on Glen Street that um, were not happy with the traffic that is cutting through there. And as part of the project, um, there's gonna be a gate installed that will allow for that roadway to be closed so the cut through traffic would go away, but um, allow for the means for emergency services to still um, gain access to that. That's been um, coordinated with the nursing facility as well as the county. And um, we've got that agreement generally in place at this point. Um, water and sewer and utilities. So the site currently um, is very fortunate and that has um, water and sewer infrastructure located throughout. Um, we'll be utilizing those connections um, that are on the site today. Um, we've worked with both the county and the city of Kingston on um, the capacity, if there's ample capacity for that. We've gotten confirmation back from both that um, 
there is capacity for the um, water and sewer services there. So we'll just be um, improving upon and connecting to the existing networks that are there. Um, stormwater management was another topic of discussion that came up from the residents. Um, this is a redevelopment project. So from, from that point of view, we have existing paved services, a largely developed site that has uncontrolled discharges, you know, essentially that leave the facility today as part of the project. We're introducing green infrastructure by the means of um, rain gardens, um, stormwater planters, bioretention areas, um, and under some underground piping to help capture, treat, and control runoff. Um, so we've we've had that review done by the city engineer. Um, he's had an opportunity to go over everything. We've re we've reduced the rate of runoff to all the design points, and um, everyone seems to be pleased with the outcome of the drainage study that's been done. As we've been able to demonstrate that we're going to be able to capture and treat that runoff before it leaves the site and help reduce the flows um, to some of the areas where people had um, a numerous um, complaints about the existing drainage network. Um, just a couple other things I wanted to hit upon. Um, we have, um, as, as it relates to pedestrian access and um, bicycle access, so the, the facilities will have the ability for bicycle storage to be contained within the buildings as well as bike racks um, throughout the site. So at, like for instance, say the community building, there'll be the ability to have some bike storage there um, for people that may be visiting. Um, and then there's also EV charging stations located near the community building. There's 12 stations um, identified on the site plan up in that general area of the, of the site. Um, all in all, we're really pleased and excited about the plan um, and I think what I'd like to do is turn it over to Bruce and let him kind of give you the, the sense and the feel of some of the buildings and what the architecture looks like. So Bruce, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Roger. And uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for joining us for the presentation. Um, again, my name is Bruce Chamberlain. I'm a senior associate with uh, Wallace, Roberts and Todd here in Philadelphia. Uh, we've been engaged in this project for about the last year and working very closely with Roger and Will on developing some of the key uh, goals and objectives for the project, uh, as well as uh, attending a lot of the engagement meetings where we've met with the residents and a number of stakeholders in the area to define the, the uh, project itself and some of the key criteria. Um, I, I think when I look at a site plan like this or when other people look at it, I think they might think that it's kind of a, a random juxtaposition of buildings, but uh, there were some very deliberate things that we were trying to seek by uh, the configuration of the buildings themselves. Uh, I think overall, the, the objective of the development is really to promote the health and wellness of and multi-generational living and to maintain as much open space that's available for the entire community. The buildings themselves are configured, so they start to describe or uh, make these discrete outdoor spaces that all have different functions. Uh, as Roger mentioned, we have uh, some passive recreation, some active recreation, uh, encouraging different uh, generations to come together and to use, uh, use the entire site uh, as a, a, a very engaged uh, community. Um, what uh, The other thing that's also dictated the arrangement of the buildings is a lot of the existing features on the site. Uh, we did not, we wanted to take advantage of the existing tree line. Uh, we also wanted to take advantage of the existing uh, flat area and also stay away from some of the rock outcroppings. And with all of that posed some uh, very uh, unique challenges, but I think we came up with a plan that really works very well to achieve a lot of those objectives. So uh, what I'd like to do is kind of walk you through a series of perspectives that we've prepared. Uh, Will, if I could have the next slide, please. So I think the, uh, the, the key building uh, on the site is uh, what we call the community hub. It's a, a signature building. It's the first building you see when you come up Golden Hill Drive. And uh, it's a very active social uh, building that's going to really have a lot of different features in it. Um, as uh, was mentioned earlier, we do have a child care center with a capacity for uh, 30 children and infants. Uh, we also have a community room for the residents and a fitness center. Uh, we have also positioned the mail room or the mail boxes up in this location, as well as 
the stop for uh, any buses and public transportation. So it becomes a very active area where residents can meet each other. A uh, good thing for just people to get to know each other and just promote a very active uh, community. I think also in this perspective, you get a sense of some of the other buildings around this behind us. Uh, in this view is uh, the second mid-rise, which has the 48 uh, one and two bedroom apartments. Yes, thank you. If I could have the next slide, please. So this next view is uh, showing a couple of the other uh, different types of buildings we have here. So on the right is the senior building, which uh, has units for uh, 80 uh, senior apartments a total of, uh, we anticipate these are for seniors 62 and over, as well as 22 apartments for frail elderly. Uh, this is a four-story building uh, with a flat roof. And you can see that obviously it's gonna be much larger than the townhouses to the left. And the challenge for us is really to start to integrate these different buildings of different scales and different uses. So we've started to develop uh, kind of a unified architectural treatment that has different uh, features such as balconies, uh, type of materials that we're proposing to use and just to create uh, more of a palette that just ties the whole building to or the whole complex together. Can I have the next, please? Again, this is a, another view of uh, the senior building off to the left. Uh, this is the entrance to the building. You can see that some of the apartments are going to have balconies so that uh, a lot of the uh, people have an ability to get to an outdoor space uh, the other advantage of the community itself is we really haven't developed buildings that have a front or a back. These are buildings that are 360. Entrances are on all three or four sides of the buildings themselves so that uh, residents have immediate access to the site itself for recreation. Uh, again, the senior building has uh, 80 apartments and the townhouse style buildings of which there are four of them have a total of 36 apartments. Next slide, please. So in this, I think you get start to get a sense of the type of outdoor spaces that are created by the way that the buildings are positioned on site. Um, this allows for, again, a lot of ability for people to socialize, uh, for people to engage in outdoor activities, uh, and just to have access to uh, the outdoors itself. And again, you can see the senior building in the background and how well that starts to integrate in terms of scale and material and the architectural treatments. Next slide, please. And finally, just the last few, again, to emphasize the idea of uh, the outdoor spaces that are starting to shape by the just a position of the, of the buildings. In the back on this view is uh, the community hub and off to the right is the second mid-rise building, which is a three-story building on this side with a slope roof. On the back side, because of the slope, we have the ability to create parking on a lower level underneath the buildings. And so what I wanted to do on these next few slides is start to share with you some of the uh, material uh, choices that we've started to look at. So we've developed a palette of uh, different materials are primarily a vertical vinyl siding that uh, again, a neutral color with the recesses that are gonna have the balconies will have accents, uh, which will be a lighter color again uh, with a vertical siding. And then uh, we will have different, the doors to the units will have uh, be different colors just to kind of uh, um, uh, enforce the individuality of the units themselves and to make them a little, uh, provide a little more color along the development. This is a typical townhouse unit, which are three stories. There is one of the townhouse buildings is going to be two stories, but for the most part, they will have this treatment. And the next slide here is our proposed treatment for the senior building. And this is, there you go. Thank you, Will. Uh, again, this is going to have a vertical siding. I think uh, if you recall in some of the other perspectives, we did have stone cladding, which is used throughout as a water course, but also using in some key areas so that like at the ends of buildings and key elevations uh, where they're visible from the entrances and to just be another uh, accent throughout. This is the elevation for the second mid-rise, which has 48 apartments total. And I believe that's it. Thank you.
Okay, Robert, I think that we've concluded our presentation. All right, great. great. Thanks. So I'll go right, I'm gonna share my screen, we'll go. Actually, yeah, why don't we have um, Vivian, you have your question first. We'll do questions first before I go to my recommendation. So uh, Vivian, well, you're I, first up. I, I'm concerned about the parking availability. I'm looking at the, uh, the map, the aerial view, and it doesn't look like there's really even two spaces per unit the way it was presented with the numbers. So I'm confused about how many parking spots were allotted per unit, in other words, per family unit. And if there's an overflow parking area in case that's not enough at any given time. Roger, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so the, the, the parking is consistent with the, with the city zoning. Um, there's 228 parking spaces um, available for the, um, the development. And how many is that per unit? How many units total? Um, it's 100 and, uh, total with the senior and the family housing, it's um, 184 units. 164. Oh, I'm sorry, 164. Sorry, I know you'd want more, but 164. No, right. And I probably of note is the senior, 80 of those units are senior housing, which I believe the parking allotment is 0.5 per unit. And right. then slightly larger for, yeah. So so that sounds like you're planning on about two per unit, um, counting that the seniors will have less? Yes. Uh -huh. it's, in that, it's in that range there. It's yeah. two it's two spaces um, per two per two bedrooms, um, one and a half spaces for a one bedroom apartment, um, and then 0. 0.5 for the um, the senior dwellings. Right. So um, my experience with uh, parking in a community developing is in living in a gated community where the private houses were part of the community. Um, there was a really dire parking shortage um, and there was an overflow parking lot and even that became crowded. Um, so I think that we could probably foresee that with visitors not even including, you know, and, and you need some kind of backup space for visitors uh, or even if there are events at the community center, which I don't see parking actually near the uh, community center in the plan. There are, um, so in the count also, there's a 10% allocation um, that's been added to the, that's, that's in the plan for, um, for visitor parking. So in the 228, there's a 10% allocation for the project um, for visitor parking. Okay, I, 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 my feeling is that it's, it's cutting it a little close um, and that since you may have some space that's not taken up, you were saying that you wanted to make the footprint as compact as you could, but that implies that there is actually other space on the property that's not being used. It's to keep, it's try to keep things compact so that we're um, maintaining the, as much of the tree line as possible there. Um, we, we're trying not to, to, you know, take down all the, the wooded areas. I shared the uh, parking uh, breakdown just so you can on the that. site mm -hmm. um, and then there are some areas of the site that um, the topography um, does create some challenges so we're trying to stay outside of those um, areas from a topography standpoint to also just keep you know having to open up more land and disturb more land we're also promoting mm -hmm. the um, public transportation component here um, so we want to make sure you know we're going to have a bus stop at this facility so um, you know there's the thought that having the means to have the public transportation available is also going to help us, you know, from, um, from a, a parking perspective. But what we have proposed is, is consistent with what the city um, zoning is requiring. Right. And that, that's a minimum. So I'm just concerned that in the future, if you do find yourself with a parking squeeze on, on the, in the community, that there is some area that could be used and developed at that point for um, overflow parking. I have another question, which is, um, I'm not clear as to the, the relation between the existing jail building 
uh, whether there is part of that is going to be preserved on another area. Um, that that's something that I, I remember you saying that there is another building that was part of the jail that's going to be preserved. No, they're not going to be uh, being demolished. They're all being demolished. All there's, being demolished. Yeah, okay. there's a there's a maintenance there's a maintenance building um, that was adjacent um, to the existing jail, um, and there was also um, a secondary storage building that was um, adjacent to the jail. Those those two um, smaller structures um, would come down. So yes, on the demolition plan. Thanks for pulling that up. Um, you'll see the main jail is in the center portion of the site, that darker gray hatch that kind of looks like a, like a cross. And then just to the upper left-hand corner of that, you'll see that there's two other accessory buildings. One is the maintenance garage, and then the other is the, like a maintenance slash storage building. Okay, so all, some of those buildings will remain, but most of them will be- No, they're all, those, those three buildings will be removed as part of the project. Okay, okay. Just thank to show you. You. The next slide, see they're all demoed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Murray was next. Yeah, uh, thanks for your presentation. It looks, it looks great and uh, interesting. Um, I'm concerned about the public, ac public transit access. Uh, will UCAT or some other agency be able to go deeper into the, the complex to hit the senior sections as well as the multifamily sections? Meaning, are there going to be bus stops in those areas, not just at the end, of, at the far end of the um, development? Um, as of right now, our bus stop is located at the community building, so that would be in that upper, upper right-hand corner of the the project site, um, right, mm -hmm. right at that hub there. That's where, that's where everything's been planned to be located. It's actually on the the opposite face there, but but right in the front of the building. So, so, so what's the distance from the senior section to that community building? Roger, can't hear you. <clears throat> Don't have that distance here just off the top of my head. I'll see if I can pull something up. Yeah, yeah it just seems like a long walk for a senior to go to the community center to take, you know, public transit to do some shopping. That's, that's an observation that I'm having. that maybe um, UCAC could go a little bit deeper into the development. Okay, we can take a look at where there might be another pull off. I'm not, I, I, I'm trying to get that distance for you, but um, it looks like it's, it's probably 200 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't seem too bad. Yeah. In any case, it, it, it may be looking to bring the bus in a little bit deeper for the 200 feet is, is a challenge. Uh, the other other question I had, uh, EV parking and what are your energy efficiency goals? I can take that one, Roger. Uh, we are abiding by the New York State energy, uh, st energy stretch code, which applies in the city of Kingston, which requires 5% of all parking uh, to be ready for EV charging. So we have 14 spots, Roger, is it more? Five percent. It's a little over five percent right now. A little over five percent. Um, and uh, we're going to be pursuing Enterprise Green Communities Plus certification. Um, Enterprise Green Communities is a, a program, an energy efficiency, energy efficiency certification program used by affordable housing projects uh, nationwide. Um, it's really best in class. Uh, their Plus certification is new, and it's for those projects that are. Um, you know, excelling for and striving for the deepest um, energy efficiency goals, uh, which means they're either completely carbon neutral or are uh, net zero ready. By Great. certifying for that, we'll also be meeting a couple other requirements, but that's our primary. That's the one we'll be going after. Sure, yeah, that, that makes sense. Now, the other, my last quick question is, in your site plan, why why is the senior in that section? Why is multifamily, you know, opposite of that? Is there some view shed, some, you know, practical purposes for why they're positioned that, the way they are? Maybe Bruce. Sorry. 
the senior building has a, a really very nice view from uh, the backside looking out to the Catskills. Uh, and also, I think we wanted to kind of keep that a little bit more, I wouldn't say isolated, but to keep that a little bit away from the fray. Uh, I mean, as much as this is, we'd like the idea of the uh, mix of ages and everything, we did want a little bit of uh, remoteness for the seniors. Um, and uh, the other thing is this building, uh, since the senior building was also four stories, we wanted to meld this three-story uh, second mid-rise with the townhouses so that this elevation all kind of works together with the townhouses. Uh, we also did have this opportunity on the back side where we could start to insert the parking underneath, which uh, was an advantage for this building. So it had a little bit to uh, do with determining where the buildings were located. Thanks so much. Okay. I'm just gonna... Amanda, you had a question? Yeah, mostly focused on, also on the senior housing. Um, so these are restricted to 62 and older, but there's a section with what's called frail elderly. Um, yes. I'm having a lot of experience with that with my 91 year old mom right now. Um, so will that building have its own mail facilities, its own trash um, disposal, its own laundry, things like that, that someone doesn't have to walk with their little walker all the way yeah. to that community center? Yes, that the uh, senior building has its own mail facility, will have its own trash and uh, uh, the other amenities that you mentioned. It also will have, uh, we, we have a relationship with the family of Woodstock who will also be providing social services for the frail elderly. So they're going to have a, a small suite for uh, providing services for these residents as well, okay. which will be located in that building. I mean, the idea is to really age in place. Mm -hmm. So uh, the building will be as conducive for that and support that type of living. So it'll have elevators? Yes. Okay, great. That's terrific. In addition, a, a good number of common spaces um, and outdoor terrace space, I think was right. shown in one of the renderings and then a back patio that has those view sheds. Do you have any possibility, have you considered at all any type of sort of, and this is for the, the whole complex as a whole, sort of raised beds for people that wanted to do some gardening? We do have a community garden and uh, right now it's shown behind the senior building, that shaded area. Uh -huh. So we'll have a, a series of outdoor community gardens for the residents. Okay. And then just one last thing, touching again on uh, Vivian's concern about parking, where's your snow storage? Will it be taking up spark parking spaces? No, uh, snow storage um, is going to be located along uh, many of the parking areas that are on the site. So um, we, because we've walked some of those edges in and a few of the spots, we have ample space along um, the many of the sides of the, the parking areas for um, snow storage. And um, the, you know, the site ha will also have um, property management there. So there, if they had, you know, some situation where they had too much snow to handle, they would, you know, obviously would have to um, haul it out of there. But as you can see, there's there's lots of large spaces in between um, and along the sides of these parking areas when we walk these edges in for storage of snow. And will there be um, there be dog areas? Like designated dog areas, we we haven't discussed any designated dog areas, but um, are you allowing pets? Will um, yes, is that in the housekeeping, I believe that's allowed, right? Mm -hmm. House rules, I should say. Okay. I mean, not to let them run loose, but you know, so they aren't destroying all the grass everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, Mr. McLaughlin. Um, two questions. One, when do you guys uh, folks plan to break ground and be ready for a uh, Occupancy and the second is has the uh, fire department in the city of Kingston taken a look at this? Um, Roger, do you want to touch on fire department really quick and then I'll take timing? Sure, yes, we did go through the plan with the fire department for access. One of the things that we've worked out 
um, is to provide them some additional access behind the senior building. So we're using some green infrastructure components along the backside of that with a with a with a concrete paver so that it can actually be plowed and snow removal takes place on it, but it also promotes a green element. Um, so we've we've worked that out with them to get them um, around to the to the back of the senior building. They were comfortable with everything with the internal circulation as it relates to the, the internal loop road, as well as the ability for us to get the access to that back rear of the um, the um, the other multi-story um, family building in the lower right-hand side. Um, Will, you can speak to the timeline? Yeah, sure. Um, timeline is we, we've been working on let me just touch on it quickly. So we intend to break ground in early to mid 2023, so in early next, next year, 18 months of construction, and we'll have occupancy. So that brings us to late 2024. Thank you so much for the information and in, uh, your presentation. Absolutely. And Mr. Baden. All right, didn't unmute. A um, couple of quick things. I, I just sort of want to reiterate sharing uh, Vivian's concern about the number of parking spaces, uh, the way it's planned per unit. Um, I think it is a little, a little tight. Um, I'm also, what is your landscaping plan throughout the parking area? It, it looks like, you know, it's quite a bit of, of parking area and I know you have the bump outs and it's sort of sectioned off, but how is that sort of mass and scale going to be broken up? Bruce, can you go to your landscaping plan that you have? Yeah. Or whatever, well, if you can do that, the screen. I'm actually not controlling right now, but no, there we go. I got it up for you. Perfect. So, Rob, if you can zoom way in so you can see some of the level of detail that's been provided on on some of that. I don't know if you can do that. that good? Right, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, so that gives a good example. So you can see there's, and Bruce, you can speak to this as this is your plan if you'd like. Um, yeah, I, again, I, I you know we've been working with Roger's group in terms of trying to provide as much landscape uh, opportunities as possible. So. Uh, obviously, the a concern for us is to really mitigate the effect of having a lot of land of uh, hardscape. So at the bulb outs to create opportunities to put uh, trees, shade trees, as well as along the pathways uh, to basically mitigate that whole effect. So uh, we have worked out uh, a lot of the landscape in terms of the type of shrubbery and uh, uh, like perennials and things like that. I think there's a key in the upper left-hand corner of this, of some of the plant materials that we're looking at. But, but again, the idea is to really create a walkable environment. So a lot, introduce a lot of different uh, landscape areas throughout the site. Okay. And, um, and I apologize, you may have addressed this. I, I had to step away for a brief moment while you were presenting. What is your bicycle transportation sort of throughout, are they gonna be riding on the, on the vehicle travel way or is there an alternate way for them to travel? Because with the number of parking spaces, I see it could be you know, potentially an is a safety issue. Yeah, there's, yeah no, there's no plan dedicated um, bike right. lane in the site. Um, okay. So they'll utilize, they'll utilize the, the internal loop road you know, okay. for, for that. Um, bike storage is throughout, it's within the units as themselves, but then there's also um, some common bike storage areas for if there was a visitor or something along those lines, so. Okay, okay. thank you, that's all I have. All right, I don't see anybody else. Anyone else have a question or do you want me to go to my recommendations here? Let's go to your recommendations, Robert. All right, let's do that. Okay. All right. So, I mean, we've we've gone through all the details. Let's see if I missed anything. So we, as we said, both the 164 units, intergenerational, affordable, mixed income community, two different affordability types for family four workforce housing or for the 30% or low of AMI. 
Uh, there's also, I don't think they touched on this, there's a portion for special needs population, victims and survivors of domestic view, uh, violence. Right. Uh, let's see. One thing that wasn't touched on, and we it will be one of our source of one of our comments, is that this is currently zone RRR, which is a single family designation. It meets all the standards for an O2 development, but it will require rezoning, which will require completion of CEPA and subsequent referral to the county planning board for that rezoning. So that's going to be one of our required modifications. Uh, the other uh, item. And we, they did mention the subdivision. Uh, that is not referable to the county based on our exception agreement with the city, but we'll make an advisory comment with respect to reciprocal easements between those two uh, that subdivision. And just these are all plans you've seen already. So the required modification, as I said before, was the rezoning referral that's required. As I said, it meets all the, uh, the zoning requirements. Uh, bicycle racks comment just got answered. I was going to ask that, and they've filled in that blank for me. <laughs> so I'm going to take that off. And the subdivision as an advisory comment with the reciprocal easements necessary. That's the sum of the staff comments on that. Okay, pretty good. I'll Anybody make a motion. Have anything support. they'd like to add? Please. I'll make a motion to support staff McLaughlin. I'll second it, Mitchell Cohen. All right, thanks, Vince. Mitch, I have I have one question. Sure. Tom Wilkin, uh, maybe I missed it, but in the in the description I had to uh, get up to, and uh, was there anything mentioned about UCAT? Yes. Yes. Okay. They're going to the parking does allow them to go through because I thought that type of parking it's their, their plan is to meet at the community building right now but mr murray asked them to look at potentially um going to the uh, senior center we could make that an advisory comment as well yeah rob and mike baden I'd, I'd like to add that as an advisory comment if the board agrees yep so the uh looking at a uh, parking uh bus right, traffic to the senior facility okay i can add that I like the idea. Mike, this is Mitchell. What was that um, additional advisory? Um, the uh, looking into this, the UCAT being able to get to the senior housing instead of just to the uh, the the multi-purpose or community center space yeah. to get closer to the senior housing. Are you good with as, that? As Mr. Second? Murray was asking, I concur with that. Okay. So do I. Brilliant idea. Okay. Anything else? Can any, we, further, any further discussion? Can we put in also an advisory on additional parking for visitors? Is it something what? they can land bank somewhere? Because even the the um, child care center, they allow for 11 employees, but when parents drop on and off, there's tons of cars that, that are there temporarily. Um, I think land baking might be the best way to go about it. So maybe an advisory comment, look into the possibility of land baking in case uh, future demand does not meet current supply. Yes. That work? Yes. Okay. And I know, you know, they answered the question about uh, meeting the uh, energy efficiency, but did we, did that include solar panels or not? Yeah, I'll the buildings have been... That. The buildings have been designed uh, to accommodate that, and we also looked at orientation to maximize that, and as well okay. as uh, passive solar. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Any any further discussion? All those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. All right. Thank you very right. much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, we appreciate right. your support. And uh, we're here if any additional questions come up. So have a good night. You too. Good night. Thank you. All right. I'm going to take us back to the beginning now. All right. So we're <clears throat> first one is Ellenville. Uh, any, any recusals? One moment. I'm just going to. Yeah, it's the quick way back to the beginning. Okay. 
Okay, Robert, it's all, all yours. Right. All right, this is, and the rest of our agenda will be a lot more straightforward. <laughs> Good. So, Elmville Dollies, this is an existing structure, uh, proposal to renovate and update the site plan for retail store in use. Here, I'll go to the, let me see if I can get my aerials going here. There we go. So this is your, uh, let's get me annotating here. This is your building here. The building is gonna stay as is, access to the street is gonna stay as is, though there will be also, there's also an access point here for it. And it's sort of gonna be a restaurant and retail use with uh, outdoor dining. Let me go back to the presentation. That's not it. That was not it. There we go. Okay, so exterior face facade lighting being updated, landscaping is being updated, and there's some windows and doors. There's some of the uh, old garage doors are being converted to windows. I think my computer is being recommendations, Rob. What's that? Recommendations. I'm trying my. Uh, I think my. Uh, Computers being tried a bit tonight with all those really large PDFs <laughs> that I had open. I'm going to see if I'm okay. Whoa. God. Yeah, it's okay. Bear with me. We're second. almost there. Yeah, I know. It's flying past on me. So let me go. That's it. Well, first, I haven't shown the site plan yet. So these first six spaces, they're angled in such a way that, especially these first three, if you have they have this area which seems to be designated as an outdoor dining area. The building is here, but then they have this area which seems to be out designated for open space. It doesn't, I don't know if they're curbing it or what they're doing, but they have adequate room to make these straight and allow perpendicular for, spaces work. Look for perpendicular spaces work and backing movements and going back out this way. So you have your entrance exit. So they want to look into that. Um, I have lighting cut sheets, but I don't have locations and I don't have lighting levels. So that'll be a required mod. I'll get to questions when I, in, a, in a sec, Mitch. Uh, that's what the facades are going to look like. Again, the garage doors are going to be windows. There is a walk-up coffee to go window. That is not a drive through They took some of the uh, things from the Apple Stone as their uh, points of reference for signage and lighting. Uh, so that angled comment, uh, coordinate with um, NISDOT for access at that route and lighting details, locations and levels were the comments. Did you have a uh, question, Mitch? Yeah, I, I didn't see any um, handicap parking. Ah, let's go back and see. Uh, you're right. So we'll make that a comment. Thank you. Good catch. I think with that many spaces, Rob, they need one, I believe. But yeah. And and uh, your your comment about the angle is that they don't need it. Is that correct? Yeah, because what you're doing yeah, is they got, I mean they, they yeah. have this area and and I don't know if this is curving. So yeah. how are they gonna make that if they can't go to here, how are they gonna get out of here? If they have angled it. Well, they got yeah, 46 exactly. feet in here, Mike. Yeah. yeah they got 46 angles, feet. They make it. The angled space is 7 through 15. Oh, never mind. I see the exit now. I apologize. Yeah. yeah. But, could, but yeah, you're, yeah, the other you're, right about, you're right about trying to get out. There's no reason to make those angled. Right. Yep. I'll make a motion to support staff McLaughlin. Second, Mike Baden. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good, motion passes. Again, we got another one from Ellenville. Uh -huh. um, any any uh, uh, recusals? Okay, Robert, it's all yours. All right, so this is, I'll, let me go to the aerial again. There we go, close that one. So two existing structures, 
historic structures. They're on their historic register. And this building and this building are actually attached through a, a raised um, crosswalk that connects these two buildings and are historic. And not only is this a uh, historic structure, but a kind of a historic use of the building. The Dungaree company that was there is coming back and I believe is going to be in the building. So historic reuse, you might say. Uh, go back to my presentation. So it's a mixed adaptive reuse of a historic structure, uh, new parking, landscaping, and fenced garbage recycling area. Buildings will be renovated for business and residential use. Uh, it's a historic structure. There'll be two EV charging stations on site. There's two wings to the building. There's the Warren Street wing, and that will have two maker spaces on the first floor and six apartments on the second. And then the Market Street wing, uh, there'll be more maker spaces on the first floor, but even larger spaces, as you can see, 22, 2250 and 2106 square feet. And then there'll be some professional tenant space on the first floor. And then on the second floor, seven additional apartments. I do not know if there are any affordable set-asides off the top of my head in the village of Elmville. I believe, I'm not sure that they require it, but they changed their zoning to allow, one of the big things they did about 15 years ago, I think it was, they allowed second story apartments is what they did. But we'll make a comment about that later since I, I didn't get that question answered. I, I reached out to the applicant, they never answered me. Come on. Uh, moving slow again. Oh, okay. So that's uh, what it's going to look like. So Devil Dog Dungarees is coming back. That was uh, originated in World War II. And it's a reduction in pervious surface. So you can see there's um, additional landscaping with infiltration potential for the site. This is one of the buildings. You can see there's a connected crosswalk that connects into this building over here. That's existing conditions. Come on. Meets all the parking requirements, by the way. Two EV charging stations in this parking lot here. Dumpster. Lighting levels are good. Full cutoff LED, dark sky compliant. That's existing condition. That's proposed. That's also existing condition. Proposed. Existing, proposed, existing, proposed. Hmm. So just want to make one advisory affordable set aside and I also a compliments on the on this, uh, this reuse of this historic structure for uh, mixed use. Most I, I, I don't think the uh, the town, the village requires it. So that's why it's advisory. I can't require Who made the something. motion. Yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike. Second, Welton. All right. Thank you, guys. Any further discussion? Yeah, can you can you give them a attaboy? Yeah, just yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. Okay. Now we're on to a SOPUS with the uh, Britain graph propane. No, it's uh, a hop realty. I think you're using it. I got uh, sent the wrong referral form for one for a while. I had a, I updated it. Okay. So it should be hop realty. Hop. Okay. Op Realty, any, it's an 88 property for commercial events and wedding venues. All right. Any recusals for a SOPUS? Yeah, Hi, me, Roxanne. Roxanne. Uh, okay, Roxanne. Thank you. Okay, Robert, it's all yours. And that's on both numbers, by the way. So special events, town adopted uh, special events, commercial events law similar to what they have in Rochester and other communities in the county. So to use an existing home and cottage, it's in an agricultural district as well for bridal party use. Uh, it's a temporary tent is where to host the events, catering and restrooms removed and everything's removed in three days of the event, which is consistent with the town code. Only permanent improvement is a dirt road to gravel drive and provide a loop for emergency access. Uh, 150 guests, 9, 11 p.m. and maximum is 10 events per year. So it's all compliant with the uh, town's uh, commercial event venues code. Uh, let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, come on. If I could reboot, I would. 
but I'm not. Actually, I think it'll be more uh, telling if I use the arrow right now. Okay, so this is in technically in a sopus, close to New Paltz, close to Rosendale. Where's Route 32, Robert? Right here. There you go. 32, so you'll recognize it. Then you have two, the connection to 213s nearby, right here, through A. And then you have this farm, which is mostly in the floodplain, by the way. Events will be take the tent will be over in this outlook area over there. Uh, nearest neighbors from that tent is a thousand over a thousand feet. I'll just show you the. Let's see. I'm gonna take us back to the slideshow. So you can see here's the tent is over here. Parking is in this grassed area, but not delineated. So that's gonna be one of our our required modification is to delineate that parking. Rob, what was across the creek from that venue? Is that all empty space as well? Yeah, like you can't there, tell from there, it's, but it's all it's all farm field. Okay. Yeah, there's neighbors, neighbors over a thousand feet. So yep. <laughs> I don't noise won't be an issue either. Okay. So that's the um, only required mod. Motion to approve um, staff, Mike Baden. Uh, Mitt, uh, well, Second at McLaughlin. All right, thanks. Any further discussion? I, I'm curious why they passed that <laughs> law and a SOPUS about limiting to 10 events per year and taking down the 10th three days after each event. That doesn't sound like it would allow for a business plan <laughs> to have this type of business. And if, with they're being that that far away from the neighbors, I, I'm wondering if they can get an exception. They haven't they, asked for one, Vivian. If they if they modeled it after Rochester's, it's an accessory use. It's not designed as the principal use. It's designed to go along with another use of the property, and that's exactly uh, Rochester did 12 events a year, and the tents down after three days. So they don't, you know, become a permanent structure. But yeah. if, if they modeled it after Rochester, it's it's based on it, it being a secondary use. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm sorry. Go, the go ahead, primary Rick. use would just be residence. Farm. It's a farm. Oh, it's an ag district. Farm. Oh, okay, got it. Oh. So how exactly do the cars get in there? There's a road. Yeah, and they that come comes in, they off come around. They then there's a road here. This loop, this whole road will loop. They're going to improve this loop okay. here. Oh, that's the and part they're going to change. And there's going to be parking okay. in the green. Okay. But we want them to delineate to find that parking lot a bit more. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So we got a motion to second. All, all those opposed. Any abstentions? Okay. Very good. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Looks like the next one is um, Hudson Valley Credit Union in New town of New Paltz. I think uh, you skipped to Headless Horseman. Oh, I did? Oops, sorry. I think you're using an old agenda there, Drew. Oh. It's our, it's our fault, Drew. We, we, we sent out one and then we changed it. We apologize. All right. Yeah. We did. <laughs> I, I don't I think know. we did. <laughs> I, I, printed, I think I thought I printed this one out from uh, what Marianne said, yeah. but maybe not. Yeah, okay. It's, I guess it's the headless it. horseman in the town of Asopus right now. Okay, very good. Yeah. Just just so everybody knows for future reference, I'm constantly updating the one that's on the web, and I right. always state the date that it's on the web. So I updated that thing twice today. Because usually, what happens when we meet is staff is uh, Bert comes in and. Uh, Edits my typos because I always have some because it's an access <laughs> data database. So I'll I'll update. I update at least like twice on the meeting day as well. So always check. Use that. <laughs> That's okay. I I've got it on my. I got the headless horseman on mine. I just skipped it. Okay, cool. Sorry. Okay. So headless horseman hayrides is adding two accessory structures. This is the site for headless horseman. One of the structures is way in the back over in here. 
and one is about over in here. Uh, a couple of times a year, they have over, they require overflow of parking. And so what they want to do is beef up their security and their access mm -hmm. to facilitate access to the site. So that will be used temporarily to um, facilitate customers accessing the, uh, the attraction. Uh, let me go back to this. So one's a 24 by 24 storage for storage and site entry overflow used for approximately four times a year. And the other one is uh, 20 by 40 eight, with 800 square feet of storage and a covered 960 outdoor covered storage. That's the one that's way in the back. So again, that's the one way in the back. And this is your uh, temporary access here. There's no county impact on these two accessory structures. Motion to support the uh, Headless Horseman, McLaughlin. Second, Welton. All right. I just want to verify, Roxanne, you're still recused on this, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, all those opposed? Any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. All right. Looks like we've got one more for SOPUS, local law number one. Any any recusals? Okay, Robert. All right. So this is the um, resubmission of the accessory campgrounds at Marina Law. And they responded to our comments, or I sh the town and their, their consultant did from the LaBerge group did. So it was local one of 2022. We received a copy of the track changes that they made. And just a review. Come on, you can do it from here. Come on, go back. Okay, so our previous comments were consistency, the comprehensive plan, the LWRP, they added that to the statute. Um, we talked about availability of land in Seeker. And we'll, they addressed that and I'll move, I'll discuss that a little bit later. And they also addressed our clarifications, which are little nuances and and removing anything that was like a like a should or a little bit wishy-washy with it and kind of made it a little bit more solid number in there so changes are linked to the comprehensive plan the lwrp um they also said no less than 130 acres should be reserved for the accessory marina campground marina being a minimum of three contiguous acres as previously stated and if you recall um it has to be at least one acre in size as well for the um, for those things. Uh, they also added additional language to the section on the being incidental and subordinate. We didn't ask them to do this, but they did that anyway. What they did was they said the main revenue is the water dependent use. So the, the marina use. Uh, they also added something with uh, requiring sewage lines to appear on the sketch plan. These are things we didn't even ask for. Uh, screening to be evaluated and reviewed as part of the site plan review for visual and erosion control. And those are things that came from uh, town or the town's plan where it didn't come from us. Go back one. Okay, there we go. So what they added was a, uh, actually, they added a uh, campsite yield plan uh, where they require, where they basically said, you take the, the acreage available, you re remove, it's a net, it's basically your standard net um, acreage kind of yield calculation where you take surface waters, hot um, slopes, uh, floodway easements, things like that out of the calculation, then you have a net calculation. And the 12 number of toll shall not exceed 12 per acre. And they have to show the calculation for a net maximum number of allowed campsites on the site. Um, so we had that. And also said one parking site at the camps at the campsite itself. They required centralized trash and recycling areas separated from campsites and screened. Uh, one staff on site at all times. I think they said something like an appropriate number of staff and sometimes that's that that was a response to us. And they also noted that recreational vehicles shall not be stored at the campsite location they have to, or stored in the off season. They have to be stored elsewhere on the site. 
comment on it right now as we stand is suggestion that they, because they have enforcement issues with respect to noise, even though it has hours of operation now existing, as well as in this code, that another means of getting the desired outcome would be to place a noise monitor on the site and require the applicant in order as maintaining their permit, because it's a yearly permit in addition to, or license, I should say, in addition to their special permit site plan, that they submit them to the um, town enforcement officer to ensure compliance, make sure they're complying with all the noise regulations and the time of day as well. Hey, Rob, this is not a site plan, it's a zoning referral, right? This so you're going to get yeah, so that this language. Is what I'm be... doing is recommending this be as part of the code. A so this is... that to be added that they basically request. Okay. Right. This is part of the code that they should consider doing this as part of requirements for the, the code. Rob, as a, as a campground, they would be required to get County Board of Health uh, correct. permit, correct? And that's in there. That's in there? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Motion I, to support staff, Watkins. Second, Baden. I, I have a question. Um, the 12 campsites per acre, that means per acre of the property or per acre of the campground area? Campground acre area. Okay. And, and the other question is, I'm just wondering, there was a specific uh, marina that was in question last time this came up with one of us um, that was camping on the property. Uh, that, do you have any idea whether that uh, marina would be able to comply with this? I don't know. And, and, and here's where it is. It's this is the law that they're producing. So now an applicant has to come before this law. They're, they're regulating it. So the applicant, when going through it, first they have to provide a concept plan to the town board. If the town board thinks it's okay, then it goes to the plan board, at which time they'll have to show all these calculations, show they can make the build out, the plan board will review it. They can ask for transportation data at that time. They can look at the build out and they can. And they can, then that's when that's when a lot of these questions will be answered. Whether they can actually do it or not will be handled at the plan board level. Okay, so that's so there's not a, there's a couple of layers uh, afforded to them that really can't be answered during seeker during law process because they don't have to answer questions with respect to traffic as part of the. Uh, okay, law. just I was just wondering, you yeah. know. I'm just wondering if they thought it through, or if they have an end result in mind, or if it's just this well, is I mean, a last time we, reasonable. Yeah, I mean, last time we suggested that they consider developing like a specific plan that does not seem to be the way they want to go, so they did a yield calculation instead. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, we got a motion and second. Any further discussion? <laughs> All right, all those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good, motion passes. Okay, now we can go to the town of New Paltz. Yep. Hudson Valley Credit Union. Uh, any recusals? Yep. Okay, thank Amanda. you. As my computer plugs there for whatever reason, I don't know why it's so slow tonight. Okay, here we go. What's the value of credit union? So we can demolish. Let me go to aerial actually first. So summarize you all with the area. I'm sure you all know it pretty well. And that is not it. We are 299 South Ohioville Road. This is the existing diner site. As you can see, it's a very Disturbed site, fully paved at the moment right now, with uh, full open access on the county route over here. And there's only in-out access here, but it's not channelized at all. So no channelized access in a lot of disturbance. This is going to be demolished. 
as part of his plan. And it can construct a 4,000 square foot credit union with a three lane drive through, includes a Hudson Valley Railroad uh, rail trail connection, and they're decreasing that impervious surface by at least 25%. This is the site. So now you can see channelized access. This was right in, right out, but now you have the bar here. Also monument style signage. Access is channelized in the back. The drive-through lane is separate from the bank. Parking is behind or to the side of the lot of landscaping in front of the building. So it's all set back. Plenty of room for the queue and pedestrian access and connectivity to the road and throughout the site and back into the neighborhood as well behind it. And I have thunder. Okay. Landscaping plan with native species. So it's a lot more landscaping that's, that's currently there. Laying levels are good. Interestingly, we used to have a lot of comments about the lighting levels under canopies that would go 25 foot candles on average or 30 foot candles on average. This is about 16 or 17 with the so we no longer make those comments anymore. This lighting has really come a long way. And one little thing is they have a construction detail when they're making this correction or fix to this curb cut, they will provide for a rail trail detour as part of our plans. And that's what it's gonna look like. Nice. Comments are health department approval for new septic. And access comments from DPW and NISDOT for those changes in access. That's Motion it. to support staff, Watkins. Second, Vivian. All right, very good. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? All those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. Okay, we've got another one for the town of New Paltz. I assume, uh, Amanda, you're still accused? Correct. All right, thank you. Okay, Robert. Okay, Gusta's Luscious. Luscious. It's a existing chocolate manufacturing operation that has a shop in the village. They're going to keep that shop and they're going to move their manufacturing operation to uh, North Bud Corners Road. This is a former uh, metalworks light industrial use. So existing building, this landscaping is being kept in place, existing curb cut here. They'll have that building plus a small shed here. The big changes are defining the, obviously all this will be cleaned up. They're, define, they're defining the parking, updating the lighting and the signage. Um, they're using the existing well and septic, but we want to make a comment given the nature of the production, it's a, very different near food production versus uh, metal work. So want to make sure there's adequate capacity there. Uh, I think that might be our sole comment, if I can get there. Rob, and does there need to be any, any testing of the grounds area with all that for any? I don't know, but also they have a grease trap as well. That's another reason that it's going for health department. I didn't see anything uh, testing. Yeah, I just was curious if with the, with it being a form of metalworks and all that being stored outside, if there was any concern with any uh, you know ground contamination we make, issues. We can make that an advisory. It may be a non-issue, I'm just curious. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that was a non-issue, we can make an advisory and say, have you done this? You may wish to consider this, things of that nature. This is for food and chocolate production, is that right? Correct. Any elevations, any you know, plans for what the building's going to look like? It's a, you know, it's a steel building. I mean, it's an existing building. Yeah, she's just not, she's not changing it anyway. No, I think, I think yeah. there's some facade change, but not really. I mean, and it's also landscape. There's existing tree line from the road, which yeah. we, could, we could also require to be maintained if you wanted yeah. to. Sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, so I have the uh, tree line comment. Mitchell, so we, got a, we got required modifications for tree line and, a, and a, an advisory on um, 
Soils. Soils? Yeah. Motion to support staff advice. Mitchell Cohen seconds. I have, I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. All those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. All right. Next one is uh, the town of Saugerties for the uh, Middle Way School. Uh, okay. Any any recusals? Town of Saugerties. Okay. All right, Robert. It's all yours. All right. So this is a special permit and site plan expansion of an existing private school on off West Saugerties Road. There it is. So it's two buildings. There are will be used for some assembly use. Uh, let me go back to PowerPoint. That's existing conditions. So what we're going to have is a new building that's a geodesic dome, and another assembly building here that's two story in there. There's a geodesic dome, and this two story space, which is offices and assemblies space. So health department wanted they they're using existing sewer, just want to make sure there's adequate capacity with respect to uh, septic, updated lighting plan for the site, especially if there are any evening activities on site, and just to look at our sustainability resiliency issues, if there's any opportunities for solar, um, EV charging stations. Energy conservation, like that. that kind of stuff, right, Rob? Yes. Okay. yes. Motion to support staff McLaughlin. Second, Mike Baden. That's on both. Right. Thank you, guys. Um, any further discussion? All right. All those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. Okay. Still in the town of Saugerties. Any recusals for the, no, it's uh, the same one? Oh, oh, it's the same one. I'm sorry. Right. Good. All right. <laughs> Moving right along. Moving right along. Shawan Gunk, local law number four. Any recusals? Right. Yes, Watkins. Okay. Right. So this is uh, changes to the zoning statute and to the zoning map. And I don't, so one of the issues, and I'll try to zoom out there. So let's see, let me just go to Sean Gum here. Oh, let me describe it first. I'll go back to this slide. So what they're doing is a small addition to their small business extension, the SBU zone, which is out in Walker Valley. And there's also a proposal to establish two new districts, one which is just immediately west of the uh, Orange County line at Pinebush for a new 54, they're calling it the 52 business, commercial, business corridor. And then there's another extension on 52 as well, just west of Sinisbog Road for that zone as well. They provide additional locations for retail service and small business at the site plan level. And they allow for above and support of ground floor. Permitted uses are mostly retail in nature. Then they have a special permit list, which is all sorts of things from auto repair, indoor recreation, drinking establishments, fast food, hotels, light industrial. It's a really broad range of what's allowed along the Route 52 corridor in that zone. We do not have a map. All that I received was a um, basically a written description of it. It was like a legal boundary description of it. So I tried to map it earlier, and I, I think I got two out of three of them, but I didn't bring them into the presentation. Uh, so the first, so they also try to bring in design guidelines, but they're not very robust design guidelines. Uh, so. It requires, the law requires compliance with design standards, but in abs absence of any design standards, they would rely on the uh, scenic resources, resources in the Shogo Mountain region, the scenic byway guide. And I mean, they require architectural renderings and elevations and that building and placement and site layout be located and has to be consistent with the surrounding buildings in the area. The setback requirements are about 35 feet setback from the front yard. So basically, even though they have some sort of 
design theme that's not consistent and it's more of given that kind of front yard setback it's more of a strip commercial kind of design throughout in multiple areas in 52. And then with the SB zone out in Walker Valley, you already have a hamlet that you're expanding that does not reach its full build out potential. So staff at this time actually requires, recommends it be dis disapproved. Uh, one, to establish new zones, you're required by state law to have a map. They need to have that map. Um, we're not, staff is not in favor of strip commercial design. We highly recommend that the community look at the community design manual, which has design standards by place type, in this case, corridors and crossroads, which exemplify both these kind of, these two areas, especially Walker Valley is more of a crossroads. I mean, but they also, they, they can look at these two different place types. And what the town's community should really look at is they're, they've basically allowed a whole huge variety of uses and they're trying to catch on whatever anybody wants to do, come do it, just do it. But instead, we'd recommend that they try to design a statute that does what they want it to do, gets the design aesthetic that they want it to do, and creates that outcome. You, by creating a standard that shows them exactly what you want, you get people there more with then creating a catch-all kind of category. So, hey, Rob, does that recommendation yeah. disapprove? Does that include the, the extension to the existing uh, area that's already zoned commercial, that small extension that they're proposing? The SB? Um, I don't know. The one in the I, Hamlet of Walk, the, the Hamlet and one Walker in the one that's already I don't, out I don't there. Think it, I, mean, I mean, the part of our comments are also to focus on that existing the SB district. You have a Hamlet that was so designated. The answer to your question, my, answer to my question is yes. Did you want to disapprove that as well? I don't know. We didn't discuss separating it out. All right. So let's leave it at that. And the idea basically saying is, is that we could write something that indicates that we would consider that, but you need a map. It. You can't, we don't even know where the heck it is. Okay. It has SBOs okay. and kind of goes to this river and this line and that kind of parcel <laughs> line. Kind of I try to map it based on it. <laughs> Ocean to support Wilkin. Back in Mike Baden. All right, very good. Thank right. you. And I'll try to give him a really detailed response with uh, a lot of examples and recommendations. Yeah, Robin, if we can, I know we made it advisory, but emphasize the community design manual as Absolutely. opposed to the to the Shangum Mountain Scenic Byway Guide because, yeah. to my knowledge, that was never vetted. That was done by an organization that is made up of municipalities, but. It was never reviewed, vetted in any way that I, I that I know of. And right. It, what's interesting is the purpose of the statute is they want to have commercial, but maintain the rural character. But what right. they're designing is actually strip commercial. So I don't see how they were accomplishing that. So, yeah. yes. All right. <laughs> I want to compliment staff recommendations. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All right. All those opposed? And any abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. Okay. Down to two left. Uh, Town of Ulster, any uh, recusals? All right. Harbor Freight, this is at the former um, office depot on, my, on uh, Boyce's Lane. So they want a 260 foot square foot wall sign where 100 is allowed. However, if you recall, the original sign was probably similar size or bigger than that and fits that facade. So I don't know about this red in color or if it's going to make yeah, it that bright little... red. But I mean, at this point, I don't think it has. What, what, Dennis? That just somebody says it's a, that is a bright red. It is a <laughs> really bright red. So they may want to make some, maybe some advisory comments on that color scheme. But given that it's replacing a similar sign kind, there's no county impact on it. Motion to support staff, Watkins. Back in Mike Baden. So Rob, you're gonna make an advisory to con consider the red color? Yeah, it's, yeah, let's. 
Okay. I mean, it, I mean, it's, who knows? It's not, I, I would have done a much. I don't know. They, they should have done a little bit better uh, visual on that because they just basically drew a red box on it. So it's hard there, to say if it will actually be that color red or not. There are other stores in uh, Poughkeepsie. Uh, it's much more earth toned, and so is the one in Middletown. I'll, I'll check out that one. Maybe that will be more similar to it. That that's a good comment, Thomas. Thank you for that. We'll see if we can yep. find a sign. Yeah. Okay. Earth they town. also have one in Middletown. North okay. I'll, I'll look at both of those then. Thanks. Okay, it's only thirty-four that, feet long. Yeah, it's it's pretty. It's big. Wow. Hey, Rob, I just looked up the Middletown one. It's totally white background with red letters. All right, so something the similar to that then. The one in Duchess is uh, more earth tone, I think. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, thank you. Right, any further discussion? Um, Chris. You're, you're recused, right, Frank? No, he's talking about the second one. He's talking oh, about okay. the next one. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. So you're ready to go home. Oh yeah. <laughs> all, all, all those opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Motion passes. And the last one, you're you're recused, right, my, Frank? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's Uncle B's warehouse. Uncle B. Uncle B's. So this was a, a approved site plan array. So we already have the um, car wash and repair bay, get um, oil change place here. You got the laundromat here. You have an existing warehouse here. This was proposed and approved. Oh, over by Staples, right? Yeah, this is behind Staples. Staples is over here. That's what I thought. So you had two three story apartment buildings that were approved over in here. Unfortunately, according to the applicant, market conditions have the supply chain issues have raised the expenses to the point where they don't want to do that anymore. And they've done an alternative site plan for a 13,500 square foot warehouse with maintenance garage and a loading dock instead. So a little disappointing, but yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, come on. So this is the site. They have that existing access here, which was approved last time. Loading dock is over in this location here. Store over there. And then this is your, um, your warehouse. Not much landscaping, a little bit at the front and around the warehouse. I mean, it's steel side building. Do you have any colors on that, Rob, or anything? No, I don't have any colors on it. So comments would be updated lighting plan to extend to the property, sustainability resiliency comment that we make with respect to energy. And uh, they, had, they had to update their SWIP as a result of this redesign. We need that final, they'll need a, the final updated SWIP. Motion to support McLaughlin. Anybody wanna make okay. a second? Second, Vivian. Vivian, okay. All right, any further discussion, guys? All right, all those opposed? Any abstentions? Terrific. Motion passes, and I think we're done. Thank you all. Thank you. I, I'm still sitting in the office. You guys are all sitting home having coffee and, and cake, right? <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I will. It's Go a big thunderstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Dennis, I could have come happened. down and joined you. I was I was at the county office building. That's why I was late. I had to run race back home. Get <laughs> well, a motion to you adjourn. Yeah. I have second it. To adjourn. Yeah. Second it. All, all those opposed? Good. We're, we're adjourned. See you guys next all month. All right. See you Good next night. month, hopefully in person. Bye. Yes. Good night. Be well.